Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh oh. What? I had music going at the same time. I forgot to mute. The, forgot to mute the music stream before it went live. So that, that streams off great. Bit. So hey, audio issues. I mean, it uh, it says hey now with more mm -hmm. audio issues. So um, yeah. But we're live. We're here. Uh, Daniel's gonna teach us some stuff about software and scripting and searching, yeah. and it's gonna be great. Um, and uh, afterwards, we'll we'll do something else. I mean, uh, it's not like internet can go anywhere or do anything because everyone's on lockdown. So, uh, I mean, hang out with us and let us do some stuff. Um, have some fun. We'll do automate stuff. If not, we'll play video games. We'll program. We'll we'll teach people how to read. I don't know. We'll do something. Mm -hmm. So, yes. uh, without further ado, uh, we are finally utilizing our uh, system that ConnectWise so willingly gave us to test and do stuff like this with. Um, so, Daniel, take it away. Yeah, so um, what inspired this, we'll start there, is uh, Zoom had several pretty bad security vulnerabilities uh, released in the past couple of days. Obviously, with all the work from home stuff, people are paying a lot of attention to it in a way they weren't before. So it makes sense that this stuff is coming out. I'm surprised we haven't seen anything on Teams yet. Um, but in any case, uh, kind of the, the chatter in the chat room this morning was updating Zoom and how to do it, how to get it done quickly and efficiently on all the clients. And obviously, you don't want to go to every one of your clients and uh, deploy, you know, manually deploy uh, Zoom. You also have a situation where with Zoom, there's local like user installs and there's workstation level installs. And so... If you're trying to fix it in a more permanent way, you kind of want to correct that problem too, where you got a bunch of people who installed Zoom, not asking you to install it, not asking your employees to install it, but just doing it themselves because they can. So we're going to correct that and we're going to make sure it's up to date at the same time. You know, we're going to do both of those things. Um, and the way we do it in the automate way is with a multitude of systems all working in concert to do it right. Um, so we're going to start out with, so we're going to create a search that's going to find installs that are out of date and installs that are installed uh, under the user profile. Um, Automate already has that information in the database. We're just going to pull it out in a search and expose it. Uh, then we're going to take that search. We're going to attach it to a group. Uh, and groups are almost like, you know, if you haven't really messed with the groups tab uh, we've got right here, they're almost like your client list. But you can populate them with searches automatically. So anything in a search, the search finds can go into the group. Uh, and then last, we're going to take that and we're going to make it automatically run a script if they're in the group, which if done correctly should install Zoom. And then once all that information updates, it should be taken out of the group because it's no longer in the search. So when we do all that, it's self-healing is the idea. You know, from we see the issue, we find the computers, we install Zoom, we're good to go. And I say we, I mean automate. So we don't have to do jack once it gets set up. So that's great. Uh, so, I'm sorry, I looked over at the chat. That was a bad idea. <laughs> I, yeah, uh, I'm good. I've got, I've got the chat. Don't worry. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so we're going to do all that. And it's not going to take that much time or effort to do it because automate makes these things really easy. This is this is prime automation territory. And you can do this for any application. Zoom just happens to be the, the topic of the day, but you can do it to install your backup software or your antivirus. They don't you don't need a plug-in in automate to do these things. You know, that so many companies they they want to make plugins for it. And like Webroot's plugin. It's functional. It's kind of a pain in the butt. You could just about do without the plugin. Or, I mean, you certainly could do without the plugin if you wanted to, using the steps we're going to show you here today, and not much else. You know, so it, it's a very powerful system if you know how to harness it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So the first thing first, let's figure out what we want to do. We want to um, find installs that are out of date, and we want to find installs that are local. Now. On this desktop right here, which is actually the desktop I'm broadcasting from, um, we're going to find a copy of Zoom. Uh, and we're going to look at that and say what tells us about this, that that it is a local install. So let's first, let's go over to software. Um, 
Now, Zoom may not be in the list of software. It should be. We just set this up. So if not, we can hit the resend button. We're doing as it live, as, as always. Yeah, we're doing it live. Um, and you guys will see all the video games I have installed. Uh, but if we go down to the Z, there it is, Zoom. And we can see right now, very obviously, it's in the user path. It's not in a C program files or something like that. So clearly that's an issue. Um, and that, that's what we're going to use. This install path is what we're going to use as our metric to find applications we want to resolve. Now, we've also got a version number. Now, an interesting note is that the local install seems to only say 4.6 as to where the system-wide install will be more specific and say 4.6 whatever. Um, so we can use that information too. We don't really need to in this case. But... 4.6 is the newest, but 4.6 point something is really the newest. And we can't even tell that on a user install. So that's another reason to fix this problem while we're at it. Um, we want to resolve that to make sure we actually have the most up-to-date version. So uh, we know we need to know the software name, Zoom. We know the install path, that. And we know the uh, place or the, 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 the version number we want to be at or under. So... Let's go ahead and let's create a search. So searches are under the automation. We go to searches. We can go to view searches. Now, this should have some default searches. Not terribly important. I generally, it doesn't look like I can do this here. I generally create a folder for my searches to put them all in a nice, go clean. Ahead. I mean, Actually, like, no. This is like a brand new setup, mm, so. Nope. <laughs> I don't have permissions. Oh, you don't? Yep, I don't have search uh, creation permissions. So, really? And if I go to a search... Um, I may need to just restart the application. Like I said, we just set this all up, so uh, or at least my user account just got set up. Now it looks like I can modify an existing search. Oh no, the save button it says locked. Right, uh, that's interesting. I'm gonna so, go in. I'm gonna I'm gonna edit it live on my end. Right, and I'll probably have to restart the uh, agent. Although yeah. maybe I'll get lucky enough can do a refresh system cache. Um, but that's fine. It, the, the the well, we have to an email code, but we have to wait on that if. If I do do that, oh well, um, we'll get it going. I fixed it, so it's good on my okay. end. <laughs> so let's reload system cache, and maybe I'm lucky enough that button will show up. Also, try changing it off the searches, and then back again. Yeah, no. I was saying if it would work, Darn. I'd be impressed. But I'm so. yeah. Okay, so I'm going That's to. That's a feature request, Daniel. You'll have to. Uh, there you go. Data. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to restart that. Um, unfortunately, everyone's going to see my desktop and all the mess on it. I don't think there's actually anything right, interesting where's, here. Where's all the hidden super secret files that tell me yeah. how to automate? The auto clicker. There's an auto clicker. That's yes, you, there is an auto clicker. That's how you um, work, isn't it? You just click. Yes, yeah, yeah. I just I have an auto clicker. It just uh, clicks randomly on the screen. Eventually, a script comes out. You just have to give it enough time. That's all. Well, it's more of just so that you know you can use one of these as a way to show that you're online and available inside there Teams or Skype. Um, yeah. All right, so now you all are going to get to see my verification token. Oh, no, don't break into my account. Uh, okay, so loading back in. Uh, we need to brand this uh, login screen. I, I keep asking for an, uh, like a, a, a version that lets me, you know, have movement and, you know, like be able to animate it. And they, the first time, that was the first thing out of my mouth when I saw it. I was like, can I animate the, the the control center splash? And they were like, no. Hey, look at that. I have uh, buttons now. So um, we're going to go, once again, automations, searches. That brings us up to the searches page. I'm going to create a folder. I recommend people do this because um, the default searches, you kind of don't want to touch um, unless you really know what you're doing. So if you create your own folder, it's a lot easier to find these searches because you know, look for that folder. Here's the five searches I created. Um, it's much quicker. So we're going to say MSP, and I, I do my company initials, but we're saying MSP, and then in this case, software. So that means searches related to software. Pretty easy to uh, find and figure out. So in here, we're going to create a new search. And again, under the name, I'm going to do MSP, and we're going to do uh, Zoom uh, installed by user. So that's going to find us copies of Zoom that are installed by the user. Now, 
we want to change this and here. So this is basically an SQL query. You can actually see the SQL query if you click the Show SQL button. So we're instead of searching the computers, we want to search applications on the computer. And there's kind of two ways to do it. This is the simple way to do it, and in this case, the right way to do it for what we're trying to do. Uh, so we, yeah. Um, so we're going to switch it over to applications, and then so now what we're doing is searching through the list of applications, not through the list of computers but it associates it with the computer automatically. So we want to say uh, name is Zoom. Uh, we already we took that down earlier. And when we say search, hey, look at that. We've got two computers with Zoom installed on it. Um, now, we want to go a step farther, though. We don't want just computers that have Zoom on it. We want to say computers that have Zoom in it. And the install path is like C slash users. Now, when we search, it'll probably still have both. It doesn't have either. Okay, I'm doing something wrong. Uh, what am I missing? Do I, I don't need to put a percent sign in here, do I? I don't think I do. Oh, huh, maybe I do. Um, I thought like automatically did that. Um, anyways, so there we go. Now we see the two two workstations that have Zoom installed as a local user. So let's go ahead and uh, it's that simple. We've got a search. It it will return if we had, you know. 4,000 computers with Zoom installed on the local, we'd see, you know, 4,000 in the total box here. Um, so we're going to save that. Bam. That one was easy. Now, what's nice, this desktop that is off um, will probably have an old version of Zoom. So when we search for old versions of Zoom, we're probably going to see it, which is great. We can't can actually fix it. I guarantee you it does because it's my desktop. <laughs> gotcha. So we, we can be pretty confident that this should show up in the search when we do our second search. All right. So we got that search done. Now... We can create a new one, or we can take the existing one. In this case, I'm going to just take the existing one. Instead of saying install path, we get rid of that, and we switch that to uh, version. So if we say version uh, is um, equal to uh, less than or equal to, um, and we're going to say uh, 4.6. Now, I say 4.6 because I don't know the exact version number of the latest build, but what I do know is that 4.6 is what user profile stuff, and I know that anything older than 4.6 is definitely out. In a real-world scenario, I would probably do the research to figure out exactly the build number that they fixed this problem in, uh, and then I'd put it in there. But I don't remember that, so I'm going to say 4.6. Um, actually, let's see if we less can... Than and not e less than and equal to. Yeah, I, I think actually less than and equal to is what I want in the long run. But, yes, okay, great. So that shows it's it's correctly finding this one as older. I do actually want less than or equal to, to in this case because anything that's 4.6 is out of date. It should say 4.6 point something. So we're definitely, we want uh, less than or equal to in this case. Um, but it's going to show both. So that's fine. And then we're going to change the name here. We're going to say zoom out of date. Save. And then this asks us if we want to replace the existing search or save a new one. There's no save as. Really wish there was a save as button, but there isn't. So in this case, we do yes, we want to save it as a new search. And so now we've got our two searches. Um, it finds, and we'll stretch it out a little, um, we see Zoom installed by the user and Zoom out of date. So that was pretty easy to find the software. Now we could go in there, we could use that we could double click on this and be like okay these are the computers we need to fix we can even right click and say run a script on right here but if the computer is offline as the desktop is or if there's an issue in the future we don't really have the ability to you know push it over time and that's where our groups are going to come in it's going to automatically do it take the human 100 percent out of the loop so we're going to go over we're going to do the same thing we did with the searches we're going to create a group and so uh, one thing I didn't mention is searches can only have one high, or one level of folders. You can't have subfolders in, in searches. I don't know why. It's annoying, but it's the way it works. So you, you end up with a bunch of search folders at the top level, and then you put the searches in it. Groups, however, are completely nestable. So you create a group, and then you can put a group under a group, and then a group under that group. And you can cascade down things that happen in for a group if you want to. I've never used it that way, but it's certainly possible. Generally, I use them. I use groups as folders, and then I never cascade anything down. I just do whatever's lower. So we're going to do MSP, and then we're going to say software. So this is a group for all software. 
we don't need to change anything here because we're just using this as a folder. It, it, even though it's technically a group, it's just a folder. It's not going to have any members. So now we see MSP software. We go one level deeper, and we're going to say Zoom. Uh, and if you really want to be crazy, you could put MSP at the beginning. I think at this point, that's not necessary. Um, yeah, I don't think that's necessary. So um, we're going to hit create again. And we're going to create two groups underneath the Zoom group. So now that we have Zoom, we have it well categorized. We're going to create one for um, Zoom installed uh, by user. And so here we get some interesting things about groups. All right, so first of all, this master group box. Easy to forget it exists, it, but it is super important. It's super important that you click it twice and it turns into this square check instead of a normal checkbox or a blank. Why is it important? Because LabTech hates us. Exactly, exactly. Excuse it's me. a weird- Automate hates us. Yes, Automate hates us. Uh, it's a weird intricacy of Automate. They've got this master groups thing where if it's checkbox checked there, um, it, it will take it out of any group that is unchecked. So you got to be in the, the what they call the gray master. Um, it's the, the middle click option. Oh, uh, great. Someone's car uh, just went off. There's, there, hey, uh, I mean, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's automated police. They're coming for you. Yeah, that's true. Um, come on. You live in a tiny <laughs> neighborhood. There's no. Okay, there we go. Anyways. Um, so the gray master, um, what it will do is it ignores the settings of everybody else. So it doesn't matter what another group can, might have. Can you mass, uh, uh, Can you mouse over the checkbox? I think the pops oh, up yeah. with tooltip. Mm, let me uh, move my mouse away and try it again. Doesn't seem to want to. What about if I put it over master group? Uh, nope. Maybe okay. I just, maybe just reading it. Uh, I I seem to remember you being right that that there was a tooltip, but it doesn't seem to want to come up right now. Of course not. Uh, it's, may, maybe Martin broke it. It's a bug in in dot four. Yeah, there you go. It's the um, network probe's fault. Yep. Uh, so the, uh, anyways, you want to be a gray master. That that's what you want. Uh, unless you really know what you're doing, you want it to be a gray master. And me knowing everything I know, I've never wanted anything but a gray master. Um, so, anyways, so. Uh, We'll put it in Gray Master. We do that first so we don't forget about it. Because otherwise, weird things can happen and we won't understand why. So having that done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to the, uh, the search lists. And now we have all our searches in here that we created. Um, so if we go up here, we should see, yep, MSP, installed by, uh, MSP Zoom installed by user. So we're going to also check this limit search box. And what limit search does is... If a computer falls out of scope of this search, it will take it back out. If you don't do the limit uh, search, then when the um, w when the computer falls out of scope of the search, it stays in the group. That's super useful in some use cases, okay. but in this case, we so, don't want to try to deploy uh, the software. Multiple I, know, times. I hate to interrupt you, but uh, this ahead. is fantastic. Uh, Ain't no nerd said avoid disaster with a grade master. There you go. Yeah, remember that. Fantastic. That's a, a Fantastic. mnemonic device uh, to, to not forget. Um, so um, the limit search, once again, it will keep uh, it, it will automatically take things out of the group when they fall out of scope. I have forgot to check that box many a times and been very confused as to why computers were in that group. Uh, and like, I know I installed this software. It should be there. Why is this thing still in the group? And then an hour later, I finally look at it and realize I forgot that checkbox. So that's important. Now, the third thing in this that's really handy is you've got a preview button to see what's going to be in there. So you can be sure you've got more or less the right thing, that, that the contents look right. In this case, we know two. They're going to join. That's great. Now, there's an auto-join button. I'm not sure it works before we create the group, so we're not going to check that just yet. Um, we're going to go ahead. Everything else here looks good. There's a lot of other settings in here. I just don't think they're terribly important for what we're doing today. Um, but... It's good to learn what's in this screen because there's a lot you can do with groups and a lot that's automatically done with groups about, you know, when you've got um, Ignite set up, then you've got automatic maintenance stuff that that gets that goes into different groups that are automatic. But we're going to go ahead and create this group. Um, and now that it's created, we'll hit this run preview and we'll hit the auto join now. Now, what that auto join does is my understanding is it 
updates the membership of all groups, not just the group you're looking at. That is my understanding. I could be incorrect on that. Um, but you run it, and it it uh, now membership should be happening within a minute or two. You should see members. Otherwise, membership can take a little time. You know, other people might know the exact time, but I know it's not instant. Um, so now that we got Zoom and we actually go in there, hey, we see the two desktops. The other thing we want to do is we want to create another group, and we're going to create one for uh, Zoom out of date. So doing the same thing, and I just about skipped over the gray master. Let's fix that. There we go. Um, we're going to go back down to the MSP search. There it is. Uh, and we're going to say out of date. Same one. Limit search. Same thing. Create. And we're going to run it again. Okay, so now we've got a system whereby we will automatically have a list of computers that need to be fixed. That's fantastic. However, it doesn't fix the problem. Right now, we've just got a good list, a good, easy-to-access list. Now, our next step is to actually, in this case, instead of getting on here and writing a script uh, from scratch, I'm going to import a script that comes from the community. Uh, it's great. It's a uh, Kyle. Uh, ooh, there's nope. Why did that not come up? Oh, because I did the wrong one. There we go. Um, Kyle Elliott wrote this one. No, uh, it, it, which, uh, he just uploaded it in the wrong username. Um, it's I wrote uh, it. Uh-huh. Uh, so, oh, I've got to sign in. Uh, well, let's sign in then. Oh, no, you all know my username. Um, so we're going to download this file and accept and agree. So this is an XML file, if you don't know LabTech script uh, files. Unfortunately, you can't read them. It would be really nice if you could, but they you come can. out. You just have to decompile the base 64. Well, yes, yes. You can't read them as a human. Um, this is what it looks like. So obviously, that's not very useful. The to, script to data right out. there? That's just uh, encoded data? Yeah, yeah, just dec just decode, decode it. it. Um, it's base yeah. sixty. It's base sixty four. No one ever. They don't yeah. use anything else. That's not base um, sixty four. So, so now that we have that, we're going to go back to automate, and we're going to go to what is it? General, and then import, and we're going to say import an XML expansion. Uh, we go to a downloads here, and we're going to do zoom install. So this will automatically create the folders. Um, and this warned you, like, hey, there could be bad stuff in here that could break your automate. That's true. If someone was trying to be malicious, it, they could totally upload a malicious file. And I don't know the extent of what they could do, but I'm assuming SQL injection, they which could means do full literally code. anything you want. Yeah. If, if that script is run, they could. Uh... Well, I mean, not even if it's run. Like, that suggests that just, just importing it alone is a security risk. Um, and I don't know exactly how or where. Like, so use caution. Don't download all willy nilly. Um, but there are trusted people. The MSP Geeks download section is pretty well curated. Um, you have uh, to be given permission to that. Yeah, you have to be given strict permissions. You have to ask, yes. uh, and you have to prove yourself before we give you permissions to. Upload. Exactly. So that's a pretty safe source. Uh, the forums themselves, if Not anything was found that was bad bad we would remove it well i say we I, i'm not a moderator um you know the moderation team would remove it but the, it could be the case that somebody uploaded something malicious there before anyone realized it and so just use a you know just like you would an exe treat it like an exe you know an executable um so anyways we've imported that script now if we go back to automation and we go to scripts and view scripts we're going to see the script in the folder that they put it in in this case it's sco um, I'm assuming that has something to do with Kyle's company. Um, but let's look at the script before we go and run it, just to make sure it's uh, legitimate and not doing anything crazy. So it's a pretty simple script. Um, I'm going to not judge him too harshly on oh, his I'm judge him. It's horrible. Uh, yeah. His, his in, uh, uh, hey, you said you made this script, actually. So this is your fault. I'm blaming you for everything. Oh, God, you got uh, me. You got me. Yeah. So... Um, so if you look at it, you've got the um, – it checks to see if the Zoom file is already downloaded um, or if the folder exists, creates the folder, um, checks to see if the file exists. If the file exists, it actually just deletes it and then re-downloads it, which is probably smart. 
Um, so, you know, by, by skip, uh, deleting it and redownloading it, you make sure you're not accidentally installing an old version. Now, it downloads it from the Zoom website directly. So you don't have to worry. Now, I would say one change I would make to this is I noticed it's downloading over HTTP. It really should be downloading it over HTTPS. Now, hopefully that doesn't break the script. But, um, you know, that's just a general security protocol, um, only down from, uh, download from HTTPS um, to prevent man in the middles, especially on an automated system where if somebody got in the middle of that, they could destroy, like every time that's ran, they could be replacing the, the MSI with a malicious MSI, and there's nothing to stop that. So, but uh, this fixes that. Now what I don't know is whether LabTech does SSL checking when it does the download. I've never tested that. So it, you could may still be able to do a uh, man-in-the-middle attack, but we're going to assume LabTech is doing their due diligence. Um, so continuing on. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, I know. Yes. Sorry. Um, I got something throat. I say LabTech. Automate. Either automate, Dan. It's been automate for like five years now. Get it through your head. Um, anyway, don't ever I, be automate to me. I, I call it, yeah. I call it lab tech to developers of the software who have never heard anything else. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we have um, people that have only been working on our comp- uh, company like three months, and they call it lab tech because I keep miscalling it lab tech. Um, I've needed to. I need to write a cheat sheet for all the software for the names we call it. Um, for these new people. Anyways, so um, now what this is doing, it's running a shell, which shell is generally what you do if you just run a one, run a want to run an exe. You don't care about what user it's run at or um, anything really special. Just run the darn exe. That's shell. Um, there are other executable options, but uh, generally shell is what you want. There's like shell as user, shell as admin. There's also... Um, uh, console. Uh, there's execute. a command called shell as admin inside yes. of MSP Geek. Uh, it's very important. Oh. Uh, basically, it just says you should never need it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's a ve- <laughs> very rarely should you ever need that. Like it's it, 99.9% of the time you don't need it. You might need a uh, console execute, which will run it as the logged in user. There are a lot of situations where that's important. But shell as admin, nah, you shouldn't need that. Um, so, anyways, by default, it runs a system. Just in case you're wondering, um, you know, if you have your uh, your agent installed as a um, different admin, it'll run as that admin. Whatever whatever the service is running as, basically, is what it runs as. Anyways, so we're running MSI, no restart, quiet, and auto update. So that's nice because then it should update itself in the future without bothering the user. Um, any any sort of uh, you know, variables, you're just running an exe. It's like if you go to the command prompt and type it in or the, the run box in Windows. Um, so it installs it. It resends software. It uh, checks to see if Zoom is installed. That's a smart step. That's a step that most beginners aren't going to do. But it's really handy because you can catch failure installs. You can note that the, it didn't install. So in this case, it resends the software, checks if Zoom's installed. Then it does it again. I'm not sure why that is maybe he noticed an issue with it not showing up immediately um and that's why kyle did that um but yeah just it's, sleep 600 seconds and then see if the software installed come on kyle yeah maybe so if it does show up it's quicker so it's done more quickly i don't ask me and also it seems to sleep and do it again i don't know 10 um, minute installations come on kyle yeah well, it looks like it could be up to 20 minutes if it doesn't detect it um oh, so anyways this script is fine. Uh, it, it, it's a little rough around the edges. I think he threw it together real quick, so we're gonna give him a little leeway here. Um, but it actually does. It throws some fundamentals in there that are great. Maybe a little rough around the edges. Um, so then, if it does not show it, it ends with error. Um, so it, it, if if the software is not installed after all that, the software is not installed, then it ends in error. Uh, if the software is installed, then it deletes the MSI. And then quits. It doesn't delete it if... No, it does delete it anyways, because there there is no... No, it ends there. So yeah, it does not delete it if it ends in error. I would uh, probably delete it anyways, but... Uh, go ahead. Sorry, I was uh, I was reading chat, and uh, I went to speak to answer. Um, oh. Yes, there's a recording of this. The video on demand uh, are always live after the Twitch uh, immediately. 
uh, sometimes during. So if you wanted to restart it, you could. Um, and it's there for 14 days. Um, and in that time, we edit it and put it on our YouTube channel, uh, which is youtube.com slash C slash MSP Geek. So. Okay. So, yep. Yeah, and that pretty much finishes the script. So that, that's good. Good into it. Um, so, yeah, it deletes it. Like I said, this script isn't perfect, but it's quick and it's easy and it does work. And I don't think it, it's going to give you any troubles. Um, it, there are more advanced things you could do if you knew how to do them. Um, script states are fantastic. So you, if if it was trying to be installed multiple times and it failed every time, you could use a script state to detect that, that the script had been mul- ran multiple times, and then do something more like create a ticket and say Zoom failing to install. So... I'll leave that for homework, though, to learn about script states and how they're useful. Um, I've used them to great effect in, like, my um, Windows 10 upgrade script. It installs it, then it sets a script state saying it's installed, and then it follows up an hour later uh, checking to see if the version number changed. And so that's a, you know, uh, there are a lot of uses for that. But whatever, we have the the Zoom install script. Um, Once again, I would recommend putting... Now, when you pull other people's in, maybe you don't do this, but... Uh, I'm going to change the name a little bit. I'm going to put MSP in there because oftentimes the scripts, the only thing you see is the name. So if MSP is there, then you can go to the M's and find that script you just created in the you know half a dozen scripts you've created or the 75 you've created if you're me. Um, you can find your script outside of all of the crazy amount of scripts Automate puts in there or you know various plugins or all kinds of things like that. So anyways, we've got that. All right, so now let's link, let's let's tie everything together. It's actually super simple at this point. So we have Zoom users that are installed as a user. That script will just installing it system wide installs replaces and removes the user level. I've already verified that earlier. So let's go and let's see if we see MSP. Um, so we do right here SEO MSP. So we choose that. We choose what's our schedule like. We could do it once, but that's pretty useless. I, I've never had a time where once was the right thing to do to a group. Um, you want to do like, say, daily, and then you want to run it. Probably want to run it after hours. Um, so we'll leave it at this time frame because um, that's fine. You can also do advanced settings. Now, advanced settings has some interesting and useful options. Um, there's skip offline agents. If you don't, if you uncheck that, it's going to run the script even if it's offline. Now, what that script will do is get stuck in the queued um, section until the computer comes online. That's actually really useful if a computer is on and off at weird hours. Then you can know once it comes on, chances are that script's going to run, even if it's only on for 30, 40 minutes at a time. So that's good to kind of catch up. Um, priority, not important here, but I will note priority is a good thing to set. If you're running the scripts yourself, put it at high priority. Speeds it up just a hair. It'll put it over other scripts that are running. It'll make sure it runs first. Um, it probably is more placebo than anything. Anyways, um, there's um, you can also try wake offline agents. That'll send a wake on land packet and then try to run the script. If you've got an environment where wake on land is available, super useful. Um, my case, pretty much Wake and LAN is never available. Uh, almost all of our clients use laptops, and laptops are often on Wi-Fi, which Wake on LAN does not work with generally. Um, so, any case, um, that's good. We're going to add it. Bam. Now that's scheduled to run. All these computers are going to automatically get fixed. Uh, we do the exact same thing over here in computers. So we go to schedule scripts. We go, we want the... SCO, Zoom install. Um, there's this include subgroups. I'll talk about a few things here while I'm scheduling this one. Include subgroups means if you create more subgroups, then this is going to also apply to the subgroups. So if we put this on like the main Zoom window or the main Zoom uh, group uh, up here, it will then also run on the children. I don't use that very often. Now, I will have this box checked, but there's not going to be any subgroups under this. So you could check it, uncheck it. doesn't matter if there's no subgroups. Um, there's also limit search. This is very useful because we're going to – I think we've got enough time. I think we're going to show some some even more advanced uh, stuff here in a minute. But limit search is great because you can say stuff like, oh, only do it for workstations. You know, In here, operating system, you can say – 
you know, windows, you know, whatever. Um, so you can use other searches to say, run the script, but don't, you know, only run it on ones that are in this other search too. Um, so you can get really fancy with that stuff. Not important for this particular one, but in later when we do some more advanced stuff, we might actually need that. So once again, we're going to say daily. We're going to say this time is fine. I don't care. It's after after hours. You could put it in a maintenance window if you wanted to, that type of thing. Um, and we're going to say don't skip offline because we want to catch things when they come back online. And there we go. Done. That simple. Um, and now it will automatically update on a schedule. Now, what I probably should have done is scheduled it to be like two minutes in the future. So it actually does run. So I'm going to do that right now. Um, so the time right now is uh, 8.58. We're going to take it two minutes in the future. Oops, I just added. Let's remove that, please. Um, so to remove, uh, just right-click and delete. There we go. So I didn't realize I wasn't doing that one. Actually, what? That put that at 9.04. Interesting. Uh, let's put it at 9 flat. All right, there we go. Anyway, so that should run here in a minute, and we'll see my computer get updated. We won't see the other one get updated. Um, and then we'll see it disappear out of the, the uh, group and everything. So, all right. Um, so that's that. Uh, that that will do it. I mean, that's all it takes. And now, you know, here in uh, what has it been? 15 minutes? 20 minutes? No, I guess 30. About 30. About 30 minutes. With a whole bunch of talking, um, we have created a system that will keep Zoom up to date. So in the future, these issues aren't a problem. Now, one thing I will note is we manually set the version number. So you'll need to go and update that version number as new versions come out. That's not great, but, you know... If you don't have a solution like Ninite, then you got to do it. Now, um, we I highly recommend Ninite for this type of thing, but Ninite will not update the user level version. That's one reason, like in ours, we had to switch everyone over to the machine install, so Ninite will keep it up to date in the future. And now that we've done this script, we don't have to worry about that ever again. Users can install it, and then it'll become a machine level install automatically within about a day. So they will automatically get updates from Ninite. Uh, if you don't have that situation, you could manually maintain your software list and, and update it and, you know, it, upload the installers to LT share and all that other stuff. If you don't, you know, if you're in a situation where paying for nine nights, not really reasonable. I have troubles understanding how it wouldn't be for any company. It is such a great system. Um, Chocolatey is also used by a lot of MSPs. Um, I don't know that as well. Nine night is so dead simple, though. It is worth every penny. So uh, just a just a shout out, uh, not a sponsor. Um, yes. The plugin nor the application, not a sponsor. There, you have to pay for both. But uh, Michael Priest developed the Nanite plugin. Yes. And for those who do not know, um, there is uh, his his stuff has always been fantastic. He's been developing mm -hmm. plugins since uh, LabTech was released, basically. And uh, everything he does is spot on. Is great. He, uh, I, I've seen his code personally. Don't uh, don't tell him. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's it's impressive. Uh, the things he does is is really good. And uh, he solves problems uh, that uh, the ordinary person would just give up on. So it's uh, yeah. fantastic. Um, does anyone know of any guides or articles to read for computer setup with? rm with the cwa rmm so bug juice that's a that's another broad question um uh, what are you referring to as far as computer setup are you wanting to like have a specific subset of software deployed or are you wanting to have uh like what, what specifically because there's really no computer setup you just install the agent and you can work on mm -hmm. at that point there's nothing specific yeah to just outside of just installing the agent yeah well, so I will go. So our next phase that we have enough time for, I wasn't sure how long I would uh, jibber jabber. So our next phase is automatically deploying the software, like pushing the software to the computer by stating your intentions. Uh, okay, yeah. So standard onboarding process. Oh, that's what Martin's asking. So um, the uh, so if you set it up right with what are called extra data fields or EDFs, as I call them, uh, it would. 
if you set it up and you can have checkboxes and those checkboxes automatically populate searches, which automatically push software to be installed. So if you do that right with all the software you need for a client to be installed, uh, then when you turn a computer online, install the agent, put it in the right location, it's just automatic. It gets all the software it needs. Now, I have a script um, for, for my MSP that um, it's the new so- or new computer install script. It automatically turns on BitLocker. It renames the computer. It uh, joins it to the main using an offline domain join, uh, which I'll plug my offline domain join script, which is on uh, MSP Geek's forums. Um, I need to probably move that over to the download section. But anyways. Um, <laughs> um, to, to, well, in that yep. uh, slight interruption. Um, so, yes, uh, standard onboarding procedure. Uh, invalid selection uh, is correct in his statement. Uh, extra data fields, search groups, Mm -hmm. and monitors, uh, along with scripts, uh, will allow you to automate any onboarding that you'll want. Now, since you're obviously new to the platform, all those, what I just said, uh, are probably like exploding your brain for what they Mm -hmm. all do and mean. What we've already shown you are scripts, searches. Uh, We haven't done any monitors. Um, We do have one, but that's kind of an advanced monitor uh, on Mm -hmm. YouTube. Um, but uh, what, what we're going to go through here is uh, extra data fields, and they're super useful. Basically, mm-hmm. it allows you to store information and data about uh, that don't come normal for a machine, such as, is this supposed to have Zoom? Or mm-hmm. is this supposed to only have Zoom version 4.6 and nothing else? Um, something that you can't just store that data anywhere else. So you have what they call an extra data field, which allows you to customize what data you want to store. And then you can act on that information. Uh, So if it's supposed to get Zoom, it can automatically be put into a search group, which then automatically runs the installer. And uh, if it has Zoom, then it skips that step and doesn't actually install anything and gets removed out of the search group because it already has it. Yep. And then you can so build it, a group to check that box <laughs> to, it, hey, this is supposed to have Zoom. Uh, let's check this box. Okay, it's got Zoom. It's unchecked that box. There's like so many things you can do. You can automate You can automate literally everything yep. if you have enough time and dedication to make it happen. Um, but I would start with something small such as Zoom, such as one application that's required, yep. like an antivirus is a good thing that you would on every computer you should anyway which it's useless in my opinion but it's just something that the mm-hmm. client wants and expects yes. to be there um uh, but go ahead yeah so i was gonna say uh so yeah the backup software there's all kinds of stuff you can do and and i would do that what we're gonna do here basically um i would do that for clients that's a great start um and also like i said i create a um a new client install script that does really basic things that every single new computer needs i don't automate that running um i could but i don't um instead what i do is just they the when a new computer gets you know set up the uh, technician will just run that script and it does several things and you'll have to learn scripting to do that so if you're really new that maybe that's not the place to start because that that can get quite advanced you know that install script is a great one to learn from um even though it could use some formatting work and maybe some cleanup um not exactly yeah take anything there well no darren's is too advanced too Yes, yeah, don't, don't do Darren. Um, you can take mine, but uh, then also mine tend to be both messy and too advanced. Um, maybe at some point we'll do an introductory scripting uh, video too. But definitely need to do that at some point in time. Yeah. So, so you know, start basic with scripting. Run a program. You know, do some basic checks to see if a program's running. That type of stuff. Get used to that before you go too crazy. But um, definitely scripts are the way to do it in the long run. So. All right, well, let's get started on this process. First thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go into the dashboard. Now, if you've never used the dashboard before, you probably didn't set up the server, and also you got to be somewhat new. But the dashboard is clunky, it's old, it's tab heaven, it is what lab tech used to be. This hey, thousand don't, tab don't, thing. Don't you smash on tab tech, okay? Tab tech was the best. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it was something. And I would say I wish I had it back. As much as. I could complain about it. 
Um, <laughs> I, I, I wish I had it back because, man, the new interface is so slow. And the tabs were annoying, but they were quick. Um, <laughs> sorry. sorry. Uh, I, uh, I created uh, – we have a bot, obviously. Uh, and <laughs> I, I set lab tech, the word lab tech, to uh, oh. time out and delete the messages of who I typed it in. So uh, I tested it a few minutes ago. Me and uh, uh, Martin did, and Invalid Selection just stumbled upon it, even though he saw the conversations of us happening. So <laughs> I couldn't help it. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we're going to have to go into the, 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 the tab craziness here um, and find extra data fields. Now, you might see additional data fields right here and think, Bam, I found it. It was right under config. It was super easy, right? Wrong. That is the wrong spot. You you are seeing extra data fields, but you are not in the correct place. Leave that place at once. Go over to configurations, then find the right one, which is additional fields. That's the one you want to be in right now. The difference is the additional field defaults is the defaults for extra data fields. And they say additional fields here, even though everywhere else it says extra data fields. I've never noticed that before, but totally that is that is dumb. Anyways, so additional fields, not additional field defaults. Defaults would be like if you want a checkbox to be checked by default, you could go in there and set it so it's always default checked. So we're going to create three EDFs, one on the client level, one on the location level, and one on the computer level. The client level one, we're going to say deploy Zoom automatically. The location level, we're going to say, don't deploy Zoom to this location. And the computer level, don't deploy Zoom to this computer. With those three, we can effectively tell Automate what we want it to do. You know, what, what as we create the system, what where we want it to install and not install. So if you have some exceptions, you have a, say, a, um, a kiosk computer. You don't want Zoom installed on that kiosk computer. Well, you just check the box in the EDF that says don't install Zoom to this computer, and it won't reinstall it automatically when it when you uninstall it because you're annoyed because it installed it. Um, so you can effectively control it. Or if you have locations like this location needs Zoom, this location doesn't need Zoom, that type of stuff. You can easily control it. Yeah, so um, going back to what we were talking about earlier, Bug Juice, uh, the checkbox to uncheck and recheck and stuff, you may have to have additional checkboxes to determine if it gets that check or doesn't get that check. And it can become, uh, uh, it just rolls downhill until you're at the bottom <laughs> and you're staring at 15 different things just to install one application. Yep. Um, don't look at my lab tech server. Yeah. So um, we're going to start with the client and then we're going to move our way down to location, then computer. Um, so we want the field name. Now, this is, again, I highly recommend branding your fields. The, the, I can't stress enough how nice it is to know this is something you set up. When you go back three years later and you're like, I don't remember. Is this something that came by default? If I delete this, is it going to break something? If you see your brand on it, you know if you broke it, you can fix it again because you made it originally at the very least. So we're going to say MSP. And then we're going to say, um, in this case, deploy Zoom. Very simple. Now we're going to choose the field type. There's three types. Text, checkbox, dropdown. We want a checkbox. Text is very self-explanatory. Dropdown is actually really interesting because you can literally make a dropdown box that has multiple selections. One use case that we use is antivirus selection. So each client has a dropdown box that says, which antivirus do they use? We sell multiples. So we can choose by a client-by-client -client basis which antivirus is going to get deployed to the computers. That way we don't need checkboxes for every single antivirus. We just choose which antivirus and then say do or don't deploy the antivirus. Much simpler. But in this case, we want a checkbox. Um, we could do stuff like make it non-editable. We can make it encrypted. Um, and if it was text, we could make it hidden or masked. We don't need to do any of that stuff. That doesn't matter um, for this. Um, sort is important. Sort is the order in which it's going to show up on the the page, which you'll see later. Um, and so you want like, depending on what you're doing, you might want if you're collecting information in there, you're you're t give it, you know putting information in. You might want a specific order like put this information, then this this information. In this case, I absolutely don't care. 
um, because th this is going to be the only thing on the tab. So now we're naming the tab. We can type in anything we want. Uh, so once again, brand your tabs because there's a bunch of default stuff. You want your technicians to look right past that default stuff and go to what actually matters. So we're going to say MSP. In this case, we're going to call it Software Deploy. You can call it whatever you want, but that's what we're going to call it. You could put a tooltip in here like check this to deploy Zoom to all uh, workstations in, and I seem to capitalize random words, um, this look. Uh, not, not this location, this client. Let's use the right words. Um, all right, so created. And we're going to do the same thing. Now, one small thing I've that, that has knocked me off a million times is once you save it, it takes you back to the computer tab. So if you're trying to enter, let's say you got five EDFs in, in clients that you want to enter, every time you save, it's going to take you back to computers. So don't accidentally save uh, your client-level EDFs to your computer tab when you do that. Just something I've uh, done. Uh, so MSP, and this time we're going to say block zoom deploy. Uh, and this one also, checkbox, tab, MSP, software deploy. So same tab naming. Keep it consistent. Consistency is always good. Now the same thing on the computer. Uh, block software deploy. Um, we're going to make it a checkbox, and we're going to say msp-software-deploy. Now, we've added all these things, uh, and I didn't put tooltips in them. It's a good idea to put tooltips, um, but now that they're there, where do we find them? Well, we go to the client level. So if we double-click on MSP Geek here, and we go to this Info tab, once again, this is an old screen that hasn't been updated, never will be, um, we can see the existing stuff. And we see this MSP tab I created. And now we say deploy Zoom. Okay, we check that box, but we haven't actually done anything. There's no reason for it to actually work. It doesn't think in any way that, that you want this. So what do we do? Well, we already did what we need to do, basically. We need to create groups, and we need to create searches. So let's go over, let's create the search first, because um, that's always best. So we just create a search that has the logic of what we want. So what I normally do is I do like, um, we'll do zoom, ooh, zoom missing, if I could type today. Um, so we're gonna call this zoom missing. That means computers that should have it, but don't. Now, how do you define that? Oh, you think, oh, we'll do applications, and then we'll do um, application name not or does not equal zoom oh yeah that'll work right that's that's super simple oh wait we know zoom's installed on these and they're showing up why is that well that's because it's finding every computer that has software that's not called zoom on it which is every computer so obviously that's not right now thankfully our good friend at gavsto.com uh, uh, gavin stone has written a nice little guide on how to fix this problem I recommend uh, gasto.com just like I recommend debeta.com where you can get a guide of exactly what we're doing right now. Uh, but anyways, back to uh, not plugging me. So basically what we have to do is... I'll delete is... that from the video. It's fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, edit that out. <laughs> um, so uh, we're going to add a group in the search, and we're going to say and not. And then specifically, we're going to say and not and software. This is weird. It's strange. Uh, sorry, not... Well, uh, we're going to change that and to an application. It's strange. It's a weird way of doing it. But what we're doing is create an SQL query that works. And so if you think of it in an SQL way, it makes more sense. It's not, you know, it's not normal, but it works. So let's go back and let's do that. So we're going to leave this guide up. We're going to use the guide because, you know, it's right here. So um, instead, we're going to switch this back to an and because that's what we want. We don't want either of these, um, and I want to. Nope, I don't. Don't hit the plus button, Daniel. Uh, hit the um, add group as it says, and then we're going to say and not, and then we're going to add another group, and then we're going to say application, and it automatically created. We noticed um, collection application, 
it automatically created something. We'll just get rid of that one. So now we go back to computer, application, name equals Zoom. Now, when we search this, we should get no results. If we get any results, I messed up. There we go. No results. That's perfect because both those computers have Zoom installed. So they're going to show up. So that means our search is working right. We're going to save this as Zoom missing. Easy as that. That simple search is all we need. We could go further and we could say like, actually, in this case, I am going to go a little bit further. Let's not install Zoom on servers. Servers don't need Zoom. Maybe an RDS server. But outside of an RDS server, servers don't need Zoom. So let's go, uh, let's see, OS type is server, right? Yep, is server. So under OS, we have is server. And we want is server false. So that means don't install this on any servers. We don't need it on servers. Nobody needs it on servers. Okay, so that's going to fix that problem. It's great. Um, one thing, weird thing about the interface, I don't know why it does this, the save button became a load button. So the changes I've made since the last time I saved it cannot save them. Now, maybe if I, what if I'd like, okay, if I retype the name, it becomes a save button. Most of the time what I do is just load and redo what I did because it's not that bad. But um, we don't want to save it as a new group. We want to update the existing group, and there we go. So, bam, we won't install it on servers, which is important. But if, there, if a workstation is missing Zoom, we don't have to worry about it. Um, and we can actually see the SQL query here if we wanted to. Um, that's useful if you're testing things out yourself. If you're like, you're not getting the results you think, you could copy this SQL query uh, into like SQL Yog or, or my SQL workstation um, and test it out. But eh, not important here. So we've got our search. Um, we don't have any software or any computers in there, but we'll fix that here in a moment. So by uninstalling it on my computer and then watching it deploy. Um, so now we're going to create a new group, just like we did before. Simple as uh, Zoom missing. We're going to make that a gray master, as we did before. Uh, and then we're going to go down to MSP uh, Zoom missing. Oh, I didn't put the MSP branding on that last one. Well, we can always rename it. That's fine. Uh, we're going to say limit to search. Very important. Um, we're going to create. And there's nothing to run, there's no one there right now, so we're not going to do anything. Um, we're going to go ahead and go to the tab. We're going to schedule the script, and we're going to say um, on this one. Oh, good. So uh, gray master means oh, it's yeah. not going to pull uh, a, any item, any computer that's inside of it, out of anything else, and it's also not going to have items that are inside of it pulled out. Yep. Yeah, we um, we mentioned this earlier in the video, but obviously people join us later, so I'll, yeah. So basically, you want 99.99% .99 of the time, you want a gray master. And gray master means it is this square checkbox. Um, you don't want the checkbox, you don't want the empty. Neither of those. You will have problems. What was the mnemonic device that came up earlier? I've already forgotten it. Uh, uh, let me scroll up. Uh, Avoid disaster, make sure it's a gray master, or yes. something like that. To avoid um, disaster, make sure it's a great master. And it, it's yeah. just basically use great master every single time, and you'll never have yep. any problems with it not finding stuff. Yep. Yeah. Otherwise, you will end up with things that aren't there that should be. That's what you have to worry about. If it's not gray master, or you might be removing things out of groups you don't mean to. Um, so gray master is the way to go. And gray master just means it's a square instead of a checkbox. It's called that because in previous versions of Windows, that box turned gray at that point. But um, it's like now a half, it's, a, it's a half check is yeah. the, the technical term for it. Yes. So uh, so anyways, we're going to schedule that script. So if we go down here to, um, where was that script? That was SCO, zoom install. So the exact same thing we did before. Now this is a place where limit search could be useful. We have already done what we need to do to make sure it doesn't install uh, on a workstation. On. Oh, you lose connection? Yeah, I lost connection. Okay. Um, yeah. Technical difficulties. Uno momento yep. por favors. Yeah, we'll edit all this out. I, I, yeah, our, our editors are ready for this, right? It's me. I'm the editor. I don't want to edit any of this out. <laughs> <laughs> you know how long it takes to edit stuff? Okay, we're back. Okay, cool. All right. So, yes, yes, I do know how long it takes. I uploaded a lot of YouTube videos back in the day yeah. uh, of me playing video games, which is not that interesting, and no one watched. Um, so anyways, so we could go into here and say, you know, there's all kinds of stuff we could do and say, 
oh, only install on Windows 10, only, you know, only install if they are under contract. That's a big one. Um, and I we probably don't have Ignite installed, I'm assuming. Uh, uh, I don't think it's enabled now. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if, if you did have it, you would um, have, like, you could say if they're under a management contract. So that's super useful for some of these re- automatic remediation. Not so useful for the Zoom install, but for automatic remediation of issues, you don't want to do that for someone who's not paying you to do it. So you would limit your search or you limit your script run to just ones that actually deserve to have it done. So anyways, in this case, I would do it like hourly because if they don't need, um, you want to it to be installed on a regular basis. You don't want to have to wait an entire day to see it get installed. So hourly is probably okay. The one problem you might have is if the install fails, and then it fails, and 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 every time, you know, it's just every hour it's failing to install. That could be annoying, if nothing else. So, we're going to go ahead, and we're going to save that, and we're going to click Add. And now, if a computer is supposed to have it, uh, oh, no, we definitely want to save. Uh, oh, it's just because I clicked on that. Mm, there we go. Did I have stuff I hadn't saved in here? Well, we'll save it just to be safe. Um, so if if there was any computer in there, it would automatically get the software deployed, like on a regular basis. Yeah, okay. So actually, it looks like our script worked. So our uh, Zoom out of date now only has one computer in it. That means it updated Zoom on my computer. So if we go to... And I normally create a... Th- uh, a fourth group in here in this situation and say zoom installed so i can see all the computers with zoom installed but we'll just go back we'll go to my desktop real quick and once loads once again slow interface the web interface is super fast it just doesn't do this stuff uh, i would um, love to show this all in the web interface yeah, but uh our uh so our automate um, is running two machines. It there's literally nothing in it. Mm-hmm. Um, the more you put in it, the slower it becomes, and the more and more you'll want to have an on-premise box. Yes, I highly recommend on-premise because at a certain point, you you get to the point where getting into the SQL. And managing your stuff yourself is so useful and and increases the amount of things you can do so significantly. It's great. Um, So I definitely recommend on-premise if you're getting to the point of being that advanced. Uh, And if you've got a lot of agents and everything else, then you can control the – you can make sure that there's adequate amount of RAM and CPU uh, allocated to it. And if you get a really, really lot – you can split it and like have your SQL on one server and your your uh, web interface on another, or so your your. So you can have so. three lab tech servers to manage instead of just one. Oh, that's always the best. Um, yeah, who who doesn't want to manage more lab tech servers? Uh, uh, yeah. So, anyways, so we can actually see. So my computer, because it was in that group that said that Zoom was installed on a user level, it automatically got the update. Um, and we can see now it does not say it's installed as a user anymore. It says it, the full version number, not just 4.6, but 4.619253. Um, so that's fantastic. We fixed a problem. It is fixed from now forever. We will not have that problem again. And we don't have to go in and check it. We don't have to check behind it. Now, once again, I would recommend a very advanced thing. Use script states. Check and see if the installer fails multiple times in a row. And create tickets based on that or send it to Slack or Teams or whatever. But that's very advanced stuff. I'm, I'm not expecting most people to do that. Um, but just right now, on a very basic level, we have fixed a problem permanently. You know, to, to quote, uh, 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 I think it was, was it Obama or was it uh, Bush? I don't know. We have put to a permanent end this problem um so and that's really what automates about that's what that's the reason you automate is never have this problem again you know you may have to go in there and update the version number when you hear oh there's a big zoom exploit 
you know, I've got to, I've got to make sure everybody's got the latest version. Let me go in the search and update the, the version number in there. You can do that. Now, once again, I would recommend investing in something like Nine Night Solution and NineNight.com. Um, invest in that because it takes so much labor off of you. But you could use the systems we've put into place here to push, to use Nine Night to install the software. So you don't need to find the installer off the website. You could just say, run Nine Night if I see Zoom is a, a local installer. That's it. Excuse me. That's actually what I did in my case. That's why I don't have a script made by me to install Zoom. I used Kyle's because I didn't have to make one because I just said like, "Hey, Nine Night, install Zoom." It was simple as that. You know, you can't get easier. But you know, that doesn't work for everybody. So, um, I think that concludes everything I wanted to cover. Um, I am happy to take any more questions if people have it. Uh, and also, we can figure out other fun things to do that are not related to. Work. Deploying software. Work. Yeah. Work, 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 work. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, Pwn Hoax, um, love your name. Uh, there's, I haven't heard of any issues with uh, control and backstage buttons disappear and get a null error on page load. Is that on the control side or is that on the automate side? I think it's on the automate side. So, if the control button is disappearing from the automate web inter or from the automate interface i don't know that'd be weird that'd be like plugin issues or something like that yeah um and the backstage oh there is a backstage button on the web interface now on the web oh yep. well what web is i don't know uh, web is fantastic I, don't, I can't say anything bad about it <laughs> it's coming along so i don't i don't web is using like four different methods to get and pull data and it's uh what two links were referenced huh daniel can you um post what? the 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 links for oh the yeah, and yeah gavin gladly inside of twitch uh -huh. chat please Yep. Uh, hold on, I gotta log in to Twitch because I'm not currently signed in. Um, Paul, uh, cause we I, have okay. 8,500 agents and have not had any issues with control that I'm aware of on the website. Um, yeah, go. this is, honestly, this is the first time I've heard about it, and we have several 4K plus in the in the community. I haven't. Seen it now. I don't. I haven't been in the control channel for a while, so that could be where it's at. Um, yeah, we just. Uh, yeah, we're on patch three too. Um, oh yeah, and we will the zoom installer script just for safe measure. Okay, so those are all on the Twitch Twitch chat. Kyle, um, so I do not know if twenty sorry twenty twenty dot okay. four is super solid. I haven't heard any issues out of it. Uh, our instance is currently on it. Um, I didn't. I see the. I, I looked at the release notes. There's not much in it. Um, so I would expect to, uh, it'd be okay. Um, there's, as far as feature releases, there's mainly just bug fixes and stuff. Um, I haven't seen any issues out of dot four, but it released like a couple days ago. So, yep. um, so I'll, I'll say, um, the three links I posted, uh, Gafsto, that was about the, the SQL query, finding a computer that did not have a piece of software on it. Uh, the debeta.com, which is my website, uh, link was basically what we did the last segment we just did. It's that in written format. Uh, it's automatically. Oh, you know, wait, did we? You know, I think we never created the search. And yeah, we created search. the. No, did we do all the checkboxes? I don't think we did. I think we uh, skipped that. What checkbox? Uh, we said Zoom not installed, but we didn't. Uh, I just realized we completely glossed over um, the uh, not scripts. What am I doing? Um, my mind's everywhere right now. I just realized we completely glossed over the EDFs. Um, we never put the EDFs in the search. Oh no! We Duh. Didn't. So this would have deployed on every Zoom to every single workstation in our network because I totally forgot. This is, my why mind. You, this is why you do stuff in development and not Correct. in production. 
<laughs> so we learned a valuable lesson. Uh, don't be an idiot. <laughs> yeah. um, so now what we actually need to do is make sure we've got the right state for the various um, extra data fields. Now, we only see one extra data field. Why is that? Because location and client have their own extra data field section. So we're going to say, is the deploy blocked? No, not blocked. We're going to say, is the client, um, is it on the client side? Actually, let's go location because I want to do all the blocks together. It Does the client block it? No, does not block it. And lastly, does the location or does the uh, actual computer block it as well? So you can get an NFR right. key for oh. Automate, um, but honestly, it's more of when you are learning the system and building it out, I would have a quote-unquote dev group that you have specific machines just put into it that you can test stuff on mm -hmm. um, and not do anything until you go through how it's supposed to work. So in this instance, we would open the group, go into the group, and see every single computer listed and be like, look, I can't run my script on this. Yep. I'm seeing computers yeah. I'm not supposed to see. So you want to physically walk through it. Um, but you can request an NFR key. It may take a while to get it. Um, but uh, yeah, you can do test locations and clients inside of Automate as well. It's it's more about making sure that you under, you walk through what's supposed to happen at each individual step prior to hitting the go button for everything. Yep. You check and you double check and you triple check. And it, especially if you're deploying software in an automated fashion or you're doing anything in an automated fashion and you want to have checks that you have checks and balances. So you want to make sure that when it's done, that you have a record of it happening. So you can go and see, okay, well, it happened on 15 machines. Uh, and a lot of this stuff is built in automatically for you. So you can see stuff happening. But um, you, for instance, if it's a failure, you want to create tickets, you have a ticket script that pulls data and automatically for you and creates that ticket for you and can update it based on the error message. There's all kinds of automation and stuff you can do, uh, advanced automation you can do um, surrounding that. Um, it's it's interesting um, that uh, it's less about the dev environment, more about a dev um, section that you mm -hmm. understand. And even if you're if a smaller a smaller MSP, you spin up a a virtual machine, a couple of virtual mm -hmm. desktops, um, throw that agent on there, and then delete it system thirty two to your heart's content. Um, yep. abuse it as much as you can make it, uh, and you can do, you can even set in your search, uh, computer name equals test bench workbench. Yep. And so it only pulls searches for specific things you can do. Yeah. So I could, right here, if I go computer and then say, well, I don't know where computer name is. Uh, uh I think it's under general. That would make sense. Yeah, it's the only thing under general. So if we say computer name equals desktop, then no matter what we do, only a computer name desktop, which is what my computer's creatively named, uh, only my computer could possibly so open, show up in this search. So we can see, like, does my computer meet the criteria? And so we know this search, like, if it meets the criteria, it shows up. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And that can be a more limited fashion. The other thing you could do... Um, is you could create groups, as mentioned, uh, of, of test rooms. You could also use an extra data field to say this is a test workstation. And then you, in here, just like we did with everything else, we say computer extra data field, and we you know choose like this you know check is this a test workstation true or false? We say true, and then that way the all, you all of your test computers will automatically show up in this search, but nothing else will, and you can be guaranteed that true or false statement is going to come back right, even if everything else is wrong. Yep. Um, so it's, it's, it's less about having a dev server and more of having a dev process and a testing process. Going back to the, um, uh, the discussing of patch that we were discussing earlier, patch manager, they have a uh, pilot control and a push it out to everyone group. Um, mm -hmm. Now, 
going back to what everyone's saying right now, which is the person who steals your lunch or the guy who keeps messing with you doing AM meetings. I have a story about this. I'm going to steal your computer for a second here. Go ahead. Um, since it's all on you. Uh, let's go automation scripts. Just I just need to see something. Um, so I was uh, goofing off with my CTO at uh, a company I used to work for, and we were having some fun, and we noticed a specific fantastic little uh, command in here. This command right here. Mm-hmm. So yep. this is uh, a great way to have some uh, fun, but it's harmless fun. It's not going to hurt anyone. Um, unle- depending on what sound you play, at least. Um, but we decided to uh, rickroll people. Uh, mm-hmm. We downloaded a wave version of the song, and we. Uh, it's fantastic, Kyle. Uh, you should play "Yay" when a server comes up after an outage. Um, That's not a bad idea. So we ran the script on uh, our. CT or CEO's computer who happened to be plugged into his giant TV he had in his office so we could hear it I don't know like 30 feet away at, in like four different rooms it was fantastic um, and we happened to play it on our uh, sales lady's computer as well uh, she happened to be listening to 80s hits at the time um, and as it happens to be she was also listening to uh, Never Gonna Give You Up with like a 30 second delay. So she was listening to Spotify, never going to give you up and our version of never going to give you up <laughs> with a 30 second delay. It was really funny. Um, the best part though, is it doesn't play as lab tech. It doesn't play as like wave audio. It plays as a random windows service that is very innocuous inside of task manager so if you happen to target a friend who's very tech savvy they're going to have a hard time finding and killing the process that's playing it um but yes you can you can do console commands and uh you can do cat facts um, yep you can... uh we we had one where we would uh launch browser windows yep. for the user great uh so you could just go to random websites and bother the heck out of them yeah um so it, there's a there's a way to have you know s- some mild fun with some colleagues. Yeah. Um, we probably should have done a uh, April first uh, video on the thirty first. We're 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 too worried about we have too we have too many other things going around to maybe next year maybe next year yeah maybe we'll, next year uh, we'll plan that um, plan some automate April first yeah. fun um, yeah there's all kinds of commands and I recommend going through and familiarizing yourself. There's also a uh, on the ConnectWise University. There is a list of what all these commands do. I don't think it's complete. I seem to remember running into commands that aren't on there, but it should give you a good idea at least. So I like telling people this. The, there's a there's a uh, a lab tech admin um, like uh, development path on how good you are now to how you you know eventually be. Uh, you know initially. You'll you'll start doing. Hey, I can install a software package from LabTech Share or from a URL that downloads and works. Um, and then you'll be like, okay, well, hey, I can do this, and then I can edit a, a extra data fields, and then you can, uh, you know, do some automation, and then maybe kick off a ticket uh, if that fails or succeeds based on that. So you're 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 looking all good, using like 10 to 15 different commands to to make your stuff happen. And then uh, as you progress, you hit a middle mark where you're using nothing but commands, but you're using a lot of them. And then as you get more advanced, you start using less commands and more PowerShell and console. And SQL queries. And SQL. Those are the three. Yeah. I mean, basically, you'll be using SQL queries to do loops, to do uh, execute PowerShell on hundreds of computers all at mm-hmm. once. Um, and then it'll be like a 10-line script that has like, 7,000 lines of PowerShell code on it and 15 different SQL queries. And it's just, yep. it, it, it's, 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 it's a nice little, uh, a curve, you know, uh, of how good you, you become as a, a, an automate developer an automate admin. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, to, to expand on some of the stuff we were talking about, like 
learning this stuff is great. Like going through and knowing the possibility space is very important on automate. And, you know, while we're just talking here, uh, let's go over to dbeta.com where I've got this <laughs> lovely automate glossary. This will help you, and it's dbeta.com slash automate glossary. This will help you expand your possibility space on what you can do with automate. Because there are so many terms, you may even see them. You may see a post on MSP Geek that says, like, I did this and this to make this work. And you're like, I don't know what a role is. I've, I've never, like, I don't know what that is. So I've got here, which I need to have external links here. But it just gives you a summary of what a role is. It's a yes or no question. And then it applies to a computer. It's super simple. You can use it in scripting. You can use it uh, in groups, I think. Um, it's it's nice and simple, but, you know, like all these terms are just, we're throwing them out there, extra data fields. We talked about that today. Well, if you go here, you can actually see related posts and see, hey, look, here's a couple posts I have on extra data fields. Like I said, I need to follow it up and put more links back to MSP Geek and Gafsto and um, wherever else. But I'm Definitely editing this out of the video. Yeah, yeah, all, all this plug, all this plug for my website because all this ad revenue I'm making on the zero ads I, I have. You have website. ad block. You may ad block your own website. Yeah, yeah, ad block my own website. I don't want to make money off myself. Right. Um, so you know, it's it, that is the biggest thing I've uh, as I've grown. Knowing what automate could do has been the biggest thing. That's been the biggest challenge. I'm smart enough. If I know a system exists, I can figure it out. But I might not know it exists, or I might not know what it does. So roles, I didn't really know what roles were until like three months ago. I've oh, been yeah. using Automate since 2013. And you can make your own roles. Yeah, and then you can make your own roles. I, that, I think that's the biggest thing I didn't really, it never clicked with me. That I, I knew roles existed, and I knew like they had some baked in ones for like an exchange server or something like that. I knew those existed, but I didn't realize I could just make my own. And all I would have to do is give it a very simple command that says like, check this registry key or run this program and, and, and get, check the result, you know, really simple stuff. And when you think about when you look, you get that in your head, there's it, it explodes the amount of things you can do. And it's the same with everything in automate. That's, that's why I created this literally roles is what made me create this list is because I realized there were things that I just didn't understand about automate after using it. For six years, I still didn't know all the little this and that's. And so, uh, oh yeah, Martin's saying nice in the glossary. Um, yes, I'm I'm very proud of the glossary because I also programmed it myself. I'm I'm proud of it from a technical achievement standpoint, uh, not just a uh, you know what work. What library did you use, you cheater? No, uh, so I used Jekyll. That's my website engine, but the um, entire setup of it is handwritten HTML that basically with Jekyll, you create functions and you call the functions. So each one of these is like a function. No, it's not JavaScript. It's a Perl, but, it, oh. but you're not actually writing the Perl. It's made in Perl. You're not writing the Perl. True. So, okay. Um, so, uh, it's its own little markup code to not go completely down that. Tangent, like, like I will. Um, yeah. Uh, Kyle said something fantastic, and it's it's uh, lab tech or, or automate is not an RMM by itself, but it's a framework to build your own RMM, which I think yes. is the the most adequate thing. And it's extremely daunting to anyone coming into the software new. It's extremely mm -hmm. daunting to anyone even that's been working with it because I recall times when I realized. Um, What's the first thing you'd put more focused on? We got Automate over a year ago, but a combination of bad on border and it being overwhelming, we didn't use it. Also, thanks for the live broadcast. It's been extremely helpful. So, Bug Juice, we, we're trying to do more and more of these. Um, and uh, if you have been on the forums, uh, feel free to check those out. Um, the, the first thing I'd like to most focus on is automating as much work as possible and that can be uh, onboard automating or going through help desk tickets and seeing what the main issue is to see if we can automate it if i'm getting seven thousand um issues uh <laughs> if i if i am getting seven thousand issues of the same thing and it's just a simple command i can run uh, i'm going to automate that like if it requires a service restart um, and I can fix a problem by rebooting a service uh, at 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to kick that off immediately. Um, but you need to have someone 
focused on automate itself you cannot mm -hmm. you can't have automate and have someone part-time automating um you'll start you'll it, it and i hate to i really hate to use this analogy but it's the only one that makes like perfect sense it's like it's like an addiction um <laughs> and as soon as you get you know the first one's free right and as soon as you you start unlocking that ability you're gonna want to have someone do that for instance uh one of the, my most uh one of my first things that uh i wanted to do was rotate domain admin login credentials and on a 30-day mm -hmm. period back in 2015 um i figured out hey i got powershell hey i can push this out hey i can reset uh this critical password that we all use and all log in with um every 30 days and it's accessible it's viewable and it prevents issues from happening. And if we lose someone who happens to know the current password, we can just kick off this one script and it resets it all again. And we don't have to worry about it. Um, I got so much pushback on that. It wasn't until 2018, 2017, towards the end of 2017, to where I was able to write the script just to reset the password, not to put on a rotating schedule, not to you know beef up security. But it took that long because the the, the individuals I was working with didn't really understand. They felt it was going to be a massive problem. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, they didn't understand the power that we had with this system that can do literally anything we wanted to do. If you have the time, dedication and understanding of how it works. Um, yep. You can plug, you can write your own plugin to do whatever you want to do. If it's missing something, yep. add it in. Um, yeah, and uh, like the thing is, you don't even need to write plugins most of the time uh, because it's so extensible. The right. scripts can interact with SQL, so everything, the entire state of the system is in SQL. So if you, in a script you can update an SQL table, then even if the scripting engine itself does not expose that information or doesn't allow you to to like say schedule a script, well, it does. Uh, schedule a report. There we go. The 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 reporting the scripting engine does not allow you to schedule a report, but I have an SQL query that inserts <laughs> yeah. into the database a schedule for anytime we get a new client, it automatically schedules the monthly report to send out. No one needs to touch anything. It just happens because I have a script that runs every night that just checks and like, okay, run this SQL command that'll put in the new client into the the list of reports. So it, it's so ungodly extensible. It can do anything you want it to do. The question is, can it do it quick enough? Because, you know, there is limitations there. Um, and do you understand the system well enough to make it do it? That's the, that's the two things. And, and if you understand the system well enough and it's a problem that can be solved quick enough, you can do anything. I wrote custom integration with Bitwarden. That's our password manager of choice at the office. It automatically takes all the passwords in Automate and pushes them to Bitwarden. Automatically. Yeah, we do that with IT Glue. We push it out yeah. IT Glue and update it. And, and there is no – Bitwarden is not writing a plugin for LabTech. It's never going to happen. I just took the PowerShell or the, the uh, command line uh, API. It's not really an API. It's a – command line program for Bitwarden, the CLI. And I wrote a PowerShell script that inserts passwords into the database. And then I put that password into a script or that, that, that uh, SQL into a script that goes through the entire database of passwords and then writes them in there every day. It goes through every single one and updates any passwords that need to be updated. Now it takes like an hour to run. So there are issues there, but it does work. I think the most common question you can have to someone who's newer to the platform or someone who hasn't dove into it is how do I get better? How do I, how do I, mm. uh, you know, how do I learn? Where can I learn all this stuff is? And the easiest answer that I can give anyone would be debated.com. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> find a problem and solve it with automate. Yes. And yep. It, it's, it's, there's nothing else that's going to teach you. I can tell you all the facts you want to know about, uh, how a script works, what function to use where, how to deploy software packaging, how to uh, rewrite your entire database to make it do things it shouldn't be doing. But there's 
you're never going to get that understanding in that click moment that you'll get mm -hmm. when you solve your own problem inside the system, um, which is why I say go to the ticketing board, see what issues you're having and solve that. Yep. Um, if you want to be more secure, set your domain passwords to be auto rotating. It's save and save it like we so part of our onboarding process is to send out a, a uh, create a local admin password that's not domained for our client computers um, that we have access to and is recorded. So if some reason the domain's locked out or the client's locked out, um, whatever, whoever set up the computer, doesn't matter who, we have an account that should work. Um, and I wrote that script. It works flawlessly. And by flawlessly, I mean it breaks a lot because it's, <laughs> it happens. Um, but it's 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 easy i'm not kyle <laughs> i'm not either yeah kyle asked uh, if we're using laps uh for our local admin no i wrote a powershell script just like sounds like uh uh kyle here did um i wrote a powershell script that uh changes the password it or checks the password it verifies it it rotates it if it needs to be rotated um and then that runs nightly i actually rotate the passwords nightly so, I mean, 30 days is probably smarter because we definitely run into problems with the nightly rotation. But we do it like every seven in uh, yeah. my current company, which uh, I didn't write it, but I was glad to see it was already implemented yeah, when that's I good. got here. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I did write the, the local one um, because having a local account, you know, it, it solved the problem we had. Yeah. Um, so, yes, PowerShell. Uh, it's not something you need to learn now, but I highly recommend – I'm, I'm going to warn you, and I, I warned a friend of mine of this. Uh, development and code writing is again an addiction. You'll start with small things. You'll learn. You'll learn some SQL. You'll start doing. Oh, that's cool. I made that happen. And then you'll learn PowerShell. And then you'll start doing things. And next thing you know, you're wanting to get a degree in development and code, and <laughs> you'll start drinking and. It's a it's a great life. The, I love it. Um, as someone the who does forehead shaped wall, uh, forehead shaped hole in your wall will grow. Yeah, uh, but that endorphin rush as soon as you hit the uh, the go button and it works flawlessly. Oh man, nothing can beat that. But mm -hmm. No, it is great. PowerShell is great. PowerShell is good to learn. Um, it's uh, it's it's super important. But I would say it's 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 like a future thing. Learn the system first. Mm -hmm. um, that way you understand what's it's happening and you understand how to do things the lab tech way. And then you can start saying, well, the lab tech way is wrong. Here's how it should be done. And then you can do it. Yeah. Well, and I would say in general, in, in, if you are in the automation role of an MSP, if that is your job, learning programming in general is a good idea. Maybe you don't you maybe the, the, the course you find that speaks to you is Python. You don't actually use Python. I don't use Python at Python. all at work. I love Python. Uh, I've used it in the past. I wrote a few programs back in the day, but it's been 10 years since I've touched Python. I Anyways, my company to use it. <laughs> but, but let's pretend that the class you found that really spoke to you was Python based. All right, so you go and learn Python. Well, obviously, Lab Tech doesn't have anything to do with python it's not built into windows it's easier to install than ever with the uh, the various tools in windows but let's pretend it's not there so what do you do well you're learning the logic that's what's important you're learning the way of thinking that will your your thought processes will be automatic processes because of programming so in general learn programming as well as doing this stuff because the scripting and automate is really terribly formatted. I don't recommend learning programming from the automate. It's it's very similar to basic in a lot of ways. Automate and, is not programming, and if anyone says so, I will fight you. Yeah, I think it's technically no. programming. No, it I is a GUI that runs horribly coded commands on the back end. Yes, but it is it's a list of commands and it's very very simple, very basic, and you will find limitations as you grow the lab tech scripting engine, you will hit hard limitations on it that have to be passed off to something else. And PowerShell is generally what people choose to pass it off to. You could do VBS script, you could do batch script, but we're not in the 90s. Do PowerShell. So 
I recommend learning PowerShell, and I think it will help propel you forward in lab tech because you can hand from lab tech off to PowerShell and just say, here, here, I'm creating the script. I do some basic checks in lab tech and then run this PowerShell script that does everything, that actually does everything. And that's, yeah. I think, a great way of doing it. But if you don't know PowerShell yet, don't throw too much at yourself. If you learn automate, learn what automate is, learn what it can do for you before you go and try to throw the complication of lab running PowerShell in lab tech is its own thing. It's a thing to learn, not just PowerShell, not just automate, but running automate in, or running PowerShell in automate is a thing to learn. So don't try to throw too much on yourself. You're going to overload yourself and you're going to get frustrated and you're going to quit. And the hole in the wall is going to get too big, too fast uh, from your forehead. So don't do that. But yeah, it, I, I agree. It's, 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 it's a, it PowerShell is an entry level tool to uh, programming the way it's implemented. Not only mm -hmm. that, but it's also a massive, massive advanced tool. So, I mean, yeah. back in the day with the Unix platforms, everyone was all about bash scripting and bash coding. Mm -hmm. PowerShell is the bash of Windows. Um, yep. And it's trying to be bash of Linux, too. Um, it, it's getting that way. Uh, yep. I'll, so I got a ticket. I got a ticket that something is stopped. As comm service is stopped on your machine. It's ridiculous. I'm closing that ticket. Um, uh -huh. So, uh, but PowerShell is... is you can do every, just about anything with it. Like some of our most complicated scripts and complicated processes are like three script, three lines of script inside the engine. And it's basically just says, check this, run PowerShell, uh, and do this with the data that you get back. I mean, I've, I've, I've solved massive problems by making PowerShell spit out SQL code mm -hmm. because I couldn't, like you can't do certain things. Like you can't parse a CSV properly uh inside of um automate so yeah i will I, say if you choose to do that uh use caution for security oh god yeah don't don't you do not want to let the client computer the, the the end workstation be the one that runs the powershell there's a command to run a run commands on the uh server um on the automate server I would uh, recommend doing that. Unless you're on-premise, then there's, that isn't available. And you have to have a machine, preferably at your shop, yeah, hosted. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah. Preferably at your shop as that individual. Yeah. And there is a trick for that. We're going to go over it real quick here. Um, if you set the client ID variable, you can you can manually set the client ID variable and computer ID. have it – or the, uh, the computer ID, rather. Yes, correct. The computer ID. And then any commands that run that run on a computer will run on whatever you manually set it to. So if you have a specific computer ID you designate as like this is the automate special stuff one, uh, then you can do that. So just, uh, just to demonstrate how uh, just on, are, amazing this is. Do um, we have a pop up up? It's acting. It's making dingy noise. Oh, we already have the script up here. Oh, there we go. Uh, so right, there we go. So I'll let you take if, back over. If we were to go to, uh, it's just that script variable, right? It's been so long since I've done. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Uh, set uh, or no? Is it set? set. Or, no, variable set. That's it. Yeah, everything's worded weird. Um, and you'll need to change the type from registry to constant. Oh yeah, you're right. Sorry. Um, I don't know why it defaults to registry. That's always been silly to me. Um. So. Wait, so wait. after we set it to, oh, sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. I did this backwards. Uh, yep, you did. I've done that a million times. It's, uh, uh, you it's don't want to put the um, no symbols on it. Right. Again, it's 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 been a while since I've had to do this. Um, yeah. So you're setting the computer ID. Um, now anything after this will run on computer 123. Yep. Um, and to go back, you just reset it to go back to the original computer ID. But uh-oh, I don't know what that is. Well, now you had to rewrite the script because you just broke it. But you can do another one. My camel case. Huh. So what is, so current computer ID. Okay, so that just gives you the, the the percent yeah. sign computer ID. Yep, and then you do uh, this. And then you interesting. Do 
I need to go back to all this again. Yeah. Nope. Oh, yeah, you're doing right. Sorry. So, yeah, that, that's a handy dandy oh. little trick there. Um, yeah, so, it, it, you know, once you set the computer ID, you can run it. And another trick, um, while we're doing tricks here, um, if you want to know what a computer ID is, like, how do you know? Like, oh, well, what? I go to the computer, it just says desktop. I double click on it, it just says desktop. Like, where do I get it? Well, you can actually show IDs. I really wish um, ConnectWise uh, Manage had on, this. Yeah. yeah, so you turn show IDs on, and now mm. I can see the ID of this one is two. Now, obviously, there's not a lot installed here. Um, but ID two is what I would set that to. So I go back to the script, and I'd set one, two, three as two. And now, even if I run this script on computer ID one, the command that runs here above this one, um, so we'll say uh, shell. So let's pretend we're running, you know, uh, host name. So, bam, that host name is going to run on computer ID two, even if we run the script on computer ID one. Uh, and then once it finishes, we're going to set it back to computer ID one. So we're going right back to computer ID one. So that would be a trick to run something in a different scope. I use that trick in my uh, offline domain joint to go to the domain control, grab the uh, do stuff on the domain controller to create the offline domain join file, and then I switch back to the uh, computer ID, the proper computer ID, and call it you know and, and and use that to do the offline domain join. So there's a lot of uses for that. I, I use that very frequently in my stuff because I don't trust, never trust the agent. From a security standpoint, you should never assume the agent is going to give you solid information. So if you're like writing SQL queries with PowerShell because the lab tech scripting can't really do it for you, that's some very advanced level stuff. But on top of that, you should never, never, never let an untrusted computer write those uh, commands because a malicious actor in there, if they knew what the heck you were doing, could be interjecting SQL commands that could completely hijack your entire server. So. Yep. So the answer to the question, Bug Juice, uh, do you ever run into agents duplicating like two different IDs but the same computer, uh, not online at the same time? Um, and that is generally because the agent will get reinstalled and it didn't match to an existing agent ID or it was uninstalled and then reinstalled. Um, a lot of issues will, like that will happen to be either someone redeployed the agent, there's a script that redeployed the agent, um, something happened to cause it to be re-pushed out. Um, it, it's... Not, I haven't seen very much of it anymore, um, but I'm not in the the role I once was that had to deal with this on a daily basis. So, I don't see that very often. We were a pretty small MSP. I mean, you said you were like three man shop. We just hired our seventh employee. We're not huge. Um, you know, we're at like 800 agents. Like we're tiny. So, um, I recognize that now. Uh, you know, so we we don't see enough to see that now. I do see sometimes where one uh, more than one computer will have the same id so they'll be fighting over who is computer id 2 that just means and, someone of you so someone did something bad it's very rare we, i would say uh, wh where i've seen it the most is mac addresses so you will have like cisco anywhere connect or whatever it's called their vpn client it gives the same mac address to like every computer that's totally oh, you should, you that should never happen. Yeah. Uh, that should never happen. But it, when it does, Lab Tech will detect that Mac and be like, oh, these are the same computer. They have the same Mac address, which I don't know why they use Macs, but. For, yeah, it's a virtual desktop instances and stuff like that. Where it's yeah. Um, we do have a question. How do you deal with, uh, say, your posh runner box dying and the new wing having a different agent ID? So, little known feature, you can make it have the same ID as the old one. Um, but you would have to update your scripts. You could set it as you could, if you say, let's say you wanted to never have to worry about that again, you could just go in and say, um, you can not have it tied to an ID. You could have it tied to an EDF, something that's easily editable. Yep. Uh, there's an EDF. You could do groups, uh, roles yeah. also work. Um, uh, the other thing I, I have done. Uh, and I think it works pretty well, but it's a little bit more hidden, is um, your system variables. 
wherever the heck they are, I don't remember, the properties, system properties. You could set a system property with that ID in it and yeah. then reference that system property in the uh, yeah, script. Yeah, you could do that. And then all you have to do is update the property. That's I've done the that. Easiest method to do. Is yeah. Your L- is your LT server in there? Uh, I don't think so. I think it was at one point in time. Maybe I added that in manually. It's I ad- manually added mine because that's the way I was using it. Um, and then I changed to using the role. The LabTech server is um, a role. And so I, I detect the role using an SQL query because I've go, gone crazy. Um, I use an SQL query to find uh, a com- the first computer with the role of LabTech server on it. Uh, and that's a little dangerous because someone theoretically could, if they knew how the role was done, which in this case is the name of the services that are installed, they could install those services on their computer and... If I say change lab tech servers in the future, so my lab tech server didn't come first before their computer, then their computer would come first in that role, and then they would the commands would now be executed on their computer instead of the lab tech server. So there is some amount of risk to using the roles yeah, uh, if um, you're really going crazy. Yeah, you could have a couple. Uh, so in in the instance of an EDF, say so you check can run posh as an EDF. <laughs> uh, H fake namington fantastic name um you can let's say you just do a sql query that says select uh one limit one select every machine that has this edf checked limit one and it, well, the first one it returns uh that's online you can do you know where online limit one um the first one it returns it runs the commands and sends it back um, yep. you could do it that way that'd probably be the easiest way to have multiples um and just select whichever one's available and online um, I wouldn't necessarily say available, but just more of online. To make it available, yeah. it would be a lot more difficult. But Yeah, there, there's all kinds of great ways to do it. I mean, that's the thing about Automate, and that's why I say you want to have your possibility space wide. You want to know what the features are and the, the crazy things you can implement because there's a million ways to do anything you want to do. Uh, and, and I'm constantly learning new ways, and when I do, I'm like, oh, man, I spent five hours trying to do it this way, and I could have done it this other way in, in 10 minutes. Um, so, you know, learning as much as you can about the various things you can do, and then trying things. Don't worry about, like I just said, like, oh, man, I slapped my head because because I, it took me an hour to do something that could have taken me 10 minutes. Don't feel bad about that, though, because you're learning when you're doing it. So definitely... Be okay with experimenting, trying, spending way too long on a task. You know, that Zoom thing that it took us 30 minutes to do with me talking, when I did it this morning, it took more like two hours because I was testing, I was checking, you know, and then I just put on my timesheet. I, I got two hours. I had, you know, more billable hours than I have. Well, it's not actually billable, but more hours on my timesheet than I normally have because I was able to put that two hours I, I spent when I was testing and making sure things worked right. I installed it on like five different workstations, making sure the script worked right and all that stuff. Don't be afraid of taking the time. It's going to take time. That's why uh, Kyle was saying earlier, it's really good to have a to be dedicated to that. To, to this is your primary job. You know, not doing tier three support, not answering the phones because, uh, you know, the tier one who normally answers the phone is out sick. You know, try to avoid doing that. Try to make your role the automate guy. And then you can prove your value over time, you know, with as, my uh, yeah, as okay. a business from a business perspective, your automate guy can replace three or four help desk guys if they're good yep. enough and if they're dedicated to doing automation and mm-hmm. that's not a that's not a, a a boast it's it's an actual fact um mm-hmm. we have three dedicated uh techs not counting uh the guy who does literally everything mindy who's also an admin um working inside automate and they're constantly doing backup checks uh automating installations verifying uh if tickets are need to be addressed by the help desk or tier three or tier two and then they're doing the work of uh building out and doing the work of probably an entire division of employees and there's only like three to four of them and Mm -hmm. it's 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 almost an it's not an immediate roi but as you start seeing the tickets come in less and less 
because you're fixing issues on the back end prior to them actually mm -hmm. being issues. You're saying, uh, let's say you have a backup that's failing every day at three o'clock and you have a guy spend six hours on it. Your automate guy sees it. Um, it takes six hours to fix it. He automates that. It takes him three days and you never have to work that again. That's now that six hours is taking 10 minutes in a script to run. Mm -hmm. So you're getting five and five hours, 50 minutes back per day. So after a week, you have that three days already fixed. That three days spent automating that process and scripting it out is now paid back. And now you are just gaining additional time that that wasn't fixed. It's, it's, to those who don't have one, it's super important to have one. A dedicated yep. individual looking, working, and developing your RMM platform. Regardless of yep. what, Automate, Kaseya, Ninja RMM, Synchro, whatever it is, you need someone doing that because, honestly, that's the way jobs are going. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, we've mentioned a few great words to use um, when you're talking to your management about this. We know most of the people in MSP Geek are not in a leadership role in their company. They are, you know, tier two, tier three that have landed in a role where they need to be making things run smoother. And so they're either taking on the challenge of automate or just trying to be with peers that that can, you know that can help them give them information and then maybe they can contribute too. you know, that's most of the audience of MSP geek. And so you, you need to sell yourself to the management. So saying ROI is great. Say, Hey, we're going to have a good ROI on this. We're going to take the, the, what used to be six hours a day worth of time. We're going to cut that down to 10 minutes a day. And it's going to take me a week to get this done always give yourself more time than, than you think. Uh, it's going to take me a week to get this done. But when we're done, we're going to save hours a day. And when the, when management hears that, they're going to be like, yeah, do it. Sit down. Figure this stuff out. That's valuable. If you say, I'm going to automate that, make it easier, they're not going to really – they're not going to get it. But, but use those terms. Say ROI. Say we're investing in this so that in the future – the, these, you know, we're going to cut the time down from this to this. Um, you know, that's the goal. And also say goal because that's, a, you know, I'm always weasel words. Um, so when it doesn't work out exactly how you think, um, th they don't say like, you said it would be this. And I said, no, it was a goal. We just didn't meet that goal. Um, <clears throat> to give a specific example, um, going back to when I was discussing the domain uh, admin rotation script that took me forever to get implemented. Uh, mm -hmm. When we l had an employee leave one of our teams at the, my previous job, they would have to spend five to six hours, uh, probably more like two hours, with six employees, uh, two hours, resetting all the passwords across all 100 clients that that team was assigned. That's a lot of time. I mean, mm -hmm. that's 10 hours now, when you look at it in the long term, employee leaves, what, every one, once a year, maybe once every two years, not very often. But if I can cut that down to 10 minutes from running a script and it fails on two of them, oh, no, you have to log in twice. Uh, it takes 10 minutes to do that. Now I'm positive 9.5 hours in time that they didn't have to do this with. And it's 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 important to... Uh, to, to find things and to prove the automation. If you come up and say, I'll give you six hours of ROI per day, and you don't know how are you going to get that six hours, um, you you may want to uh, prep a little before going in and, and doing that um, because it's you don't want to put yourself in a position that causes you to be unfavorable to management or unfavorable to your supervisor. So make sure you can actually show and quantify the time that you're saying you can save um, yeah. because you will save time. It's guaranteed. Um, it may take a year, a month, 17 years for the time to accrue enough to, to, to save that time. But it's, it's all, it's all relative. And as long as you can prove that time, um, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be great. Yeah, so Martin mentions um, – he mentioned that there's automation value on the ConnectWise Now pods and the automation value on the scripts. 
I'm not sure what he's talking about there. It sounds like there there's some system built in. But again, there's stuff I don't know about, despite using Automate for. So uh, if you want to get real years. fancy and talk about, uh, at my old job, I was in the process of making sure every task and every item that was done was marked as billable inside of ConnectWise. It was either mm-hmm. it either created a ticket, and it put time on that ticket, and that ticket was marked as billed and not included. So we could actually run reports and show that we yep. did. 2 million hours on your account last month out of work. Uh, ah. And it's, that's, that's levels of automation that uh, you, you do to show value to clients versus show value to your supervisor. Yeah. And well, it's so, a different level and it's more of someone comes to you and says, hey, our client's leaving because they say we don't do anything. And you're like, we literally do our, the world for them. And they don't believe you, so it's a way to, to prove it. And uh, so the going into ticketing inside of so with Manage, um, you can create a ticket inside of a script, have that uh, fake tech. That's great. Have that um, ticket set to a specific category. Have that category mapped to say the automation board. But not only that, but you can process, run data, update that ticket, and then kick that ticket to an entirely different board with different uh, priority statuses uh, based on the automation you do inside of um, LabTech. So let's say you have a script that does drive cleanup. You go in, you clean up the drive, you can't delete six files you uh, process it, it works fine. You open a ticket, you put time to it, you close the ticket, no big deal. Let's say you get to it and you fail, you fail horribly. So you open the ticket, you put the time you put on the ticket and then you kick that ticket to the help desk board or to the automate admin to fix, find out what happens and to fix the problem. Um, But let's say you clean up and you notice that the space still isn't full causing you know the the issue that caused the disk cleanup to run like you know disk cleanup monitor you know says hey it's it the drive's full let's run disk cleanup um you can then say well i ran the disk cleanup it cleaned up what i could it's still showing issues kick it over to another board uh with a priority one status to says hey this is going to be a massive problem immediately uh and it gets handled within 30 minutes someone logs in deletes files whatever they have to do manually but you can do that all from a script without yeah. having anyone touch it or anyone do anything you can say we did everything we're good hey there was a problem i couldn't run the cleanup process properly can you please find out why i didn't run and fix it or hey i ran we still have a problem uh please send help immediately yeah yeah, the, the the ticket stuff is really great, and you can put in time, and you can run reports on that. You can show clients. We um, so automate with the Ignite uh, plugin does a lot of stuff automatically about like disk cleanup and whatnot. And so on our monthly reports, we include that time. You know, so we send a, a thing that says like we spent twelve hours on you client that only has four users uh, this month, and that looks great. That's that's great, and. It is value that if we didn't do that, you know, if the automated system didn't do it, it'd have to be done. So it's I, it's reasonable to say we did that. But now we, our client who we're charging a hundred some odd dollars a month uh, per user, um, they see value in that. They see twelve dollars. Man, we got like two hours worth of work per computer per user uh, out, out of you guys. So all that stuff is is definitely right to do. And in this case, you know, we probably should create a ticket and say Zoom was installed and then close the ticket and put 15 minutes of time in it. And, you know, because if a human did it. Minutes. Come on, put the actual time in there. Run it SQL. would take 15 minutes. Well, I don't know about that. I just remember having to figure out how to calculate time in SQL, and that was a fun process. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, how long this actually takes would be, it's like 30 seconds. But if Not a human long. were how to do it, yeah, but you then, can't estimate that. I put the actual time it takes to run. I mean, let's that's nice. I, hey, let's get real. Uh, I, I prefer to put what a human would take. If I'm trying to show value to both um, both the management, because that's how much time a human would have to take to do this per computer. So if, a, 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 if it is 15 minutes, and that is how long it would take to call a client, remote it in their computer, install Zoom. I that mean, is I agree what with you. Uh, I would just... I would lazy the way out of it. And at the programmer in me would uh, 
put yeah, it in Martin, two different SQL queries. Martin and, and uh, Kyle Elliott agree. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's wrong. It's time saved. I'm just saying um, it's that that's not what I personally would do because the yeah. programmer in me would be like, how long did it take? Oh, I put that to the ticket. Uh, I would be fine with having that elsewhere, but if I'm giving it to the client, it I want up anyway. 15 yeah, minutes. yeah, there you go. We're oh. Round up to 15 minutes. Yeah, Problem there solved. You go. It rounds up. Yep, yep. Um, so, but if you're handing that to the client, it's really handy to say, or if you're trying to talk to management and show the value, if you can say, you can pull a report and say, these are all the automated tickets, and this is how much time is saved by the automation. You know, that's huge value and the the decision makers in your company assuming they're not just technical people who happen to own the company um you know we don't we don't all live in that wonderful world where the technical person actually owns the company um they are going to see those numbers and be like yeah that's value that right there is value that and so if you can hand them that that's great and if you give them the exact numbers i mean this script you know 30 seconds to run like there's no uh that that's not that's not proving value. And so I, I, I understand where you're coming from on that. I also would love to know how long it takes to run. But I also think if you're trying to show other people, it's better to show what you're saving, not what it actually took. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, which is why it builds in 15-minute increments and I got to worry about. I, there you go. Because I can record yeah. the – see, it, it's, the, it's the, 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 the data analyst in me that says I need true data. Mm. How long did this actually take to run? We build it in for 15 minutes. Great. It ran in 27.3 seconds. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's reasonable too. Um, so yeah, the, the proving value is important and, and thinking about it from a business standpoint. I mean, I, as I've grown as a technician, as like I said, I've been in this game for 15 years, um, not MSP, but I've been in IT for 15 years. And the biggest thing I've learned, you know, I've got a wealth of knowledge that I've, I've collected. Most of it is useless at this point because, um, you know, server 2003 doesn't exist anymore. But I've got a wealth of knowledge. But the most important in my day-to-day life at this point is being able to look at something and define why it's important to other people, be it clients or management. Now, granted, I am management. But – the reason I am management is because I've learned these skills and I can, I can talk to the other managers and say, we need to do this. I need to spend three days working on this so that we never have this problem again. And my management will listen because I know the words to tell them. So that's, that's also a skill to develop. You know, we're talking about your automate skills. Don't focus just on the technical. Technical is really important. Doing this stuff right is really important and learning it is important. But You'll never get the time you need if you don't know how to talk the talk to the management. So, also important. Yeah, and 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 you know we're kind of just riffing right now. So, um, yeah, that that that's something I've learned. That uh, you know, if you want to learn from my experience, that is something I've I've spent time cultivating is my ability to talk to management uh, in their language because they're never going to talk to you in your language. Synergistic gonna... buzzwords. Yeah, it, it works. It's dumb. It's annoying. But I see my boss fall for every sales tactic that comes along because they have good marketing buzzwords. And I have to use those same buzzwords to counter it. That's the only way it can work. Yeah. You know, if he, if he tries to bring me a product and I, I know that product is trash, I can't say this product is trash because technically this, this, and this. I have to say it doesn't meet blah, 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 compliancy, blah, 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 blah. I got to use those same buzzwords. And so develop those skills too. I like Trust throwing me, out the uh, – if, if I know it's not a good product, I like throwing out it has security vulnerabilities. Yeah, totally. You know, these days, that is a buzzword. You know, as much as it shouldn't be, it is. So you tell them it's security vulnerabilities, like there, there are huge gaps in their security net. Say stupid stuff like that. It will work. And you'll feel bad for saying it, but you'll be happy with the results. There's software uh, I've implemented that I was like, this is gonna, this is gonna fall flat. Prior, you know, prior to learning the techniques of, you know, countering that suggestion, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, that, that I just, I like, look, it's gonna fail. I'll implement it if you want, but it's gonna be garbage. We won't use it in three weeks, and we didn't use it within three weeks. And then I'm like, I kind of smugly went, you know, uh huh, I told you so. But now, I, now you just throw buzzwords like, um, yeah. it's it, uh, the the cost, the cost is is gonna massively increase after we use it. Um, you've been paying for it for six months already. Why didn't you tell me? It's useless. Cancel it, please, for the love of God. Um, 
uh, you know, it, there is no ROI with it. It's going to cost more to, mm -hmm. to, to utilize it than it will be to, to not use it. Um, and, uh, you know, fancy, uh, vulnerabilities, it's got security vulnerabilities. It's a great one yeah. because it, it, everything's got security vulnerabilities. Everything does, whether they're out in the wild or not is up for debate, but everything does. Yeah. Twitch yeah. has it. Uh, steam has it. Windows has it. Linux has it. So. Yeah, and I will give you a, a great one to use, which is total cost of ownership. That is oh, a yeah. great buzzword. That's a good buzzword. Yeah, because one, it barely means anything. But two, you can throw in there anything you want. If they're trying to make you implement a piece of software that you know is going to be a pain in the butt to maintain, Automate. that it's going to... Well, yeah, yes, <laughs> but uh, let, let's say they walk up with an antivirus. And you know this is a crap antivirus. It's going to cause nothing but troubles. People's computers are going to break because of it. You don't want to use this antivirus. Say the total cost of ownership is too high. We are going to spend too much time, too many man hours, repairing problems that this software causes. And the the uh, not only do we have the initial cost we have the monthly cost which is greater than whatever our current software is or you know whatever you need to do but that total cost of ownership i've just found is a, is a great one uh to to keep an eye on and it realistically if you really wrap your head around the the concept of total cost of ownership it's a great way to look at software and you're evaluating it to say like you know is it what what is this going to really cost us not not what's the price tag what how much time are we going to have to spend on it? How many times are we going to have to check it? You know, um, uh, there, there's Netrix. Netrix is a software that my boss wants every client to have. They don't really have a great MSP program. It's not centralized, managed, or anything like that. So the total cost of ownership of that software is very high because we have to go to every single client and run reports, check things, make sure stuff is working right. We have to go and do that on a regular basis. And so the number of man hours it takes is higher. So if we find another software that's more expensive per month, but doesn't have that management overhead, that's the better software. You know, we choose yeah. that instead. Because it's, uh, it's, you, you, because you can't think of it as it's saving us X hours because it's not just that it's, you're taking mm -hmm. that X hours because they're still available. They're now available in the pool of hours. Yep. that can be used to uh, something else. So it's not just saving, let's say your personal cost to a company is $100. It's not saving $100 per hour. It's saving $200 per hour because now that hour is being spent elsewhere to yep. further the company, resolve tickets, whatever, what have you. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, and, and, and once you start thinking that way, you're going to hate yourself when you start saying those buzzwords and you don't mean to. Um, yeah. It's going to happen. But, you will love the results. You will be happy when you talk to uh, your manager, your your company owner. You talk to him and you tell him a piece of software isn't right and he listens. You're going to be like, oh my God, that was the best thing ever. I'm a magician. Yeah. I'm a magi I, magician. I, I, I'm, I am like, you know, I've got like mind control going on here. I said things and he listened. That's never happened before. Uh, same with it, trying to get new products in. You know, you got this new product. It looks great. You know, you think it'll save so much time or it'll bring so much value to the clients. Again, saying value to the clients, I wouldn't have said that five years ago. I would have never used that term. Now, when I talk to management, I say that all the time. I'm going to be like, this will bring value to the clients because it'll do this and this and this form. And then guess what? Management listens. You know, because they hear value to the clients and like, oh, yeah, we can cut we can take a little cost or maybe we we sell this as an add-on service um you know because we want to we want to increase our value to the client and and so suddenly they listen and so you just got to learn those terms like i said we're we're getting way off topic here but it's I mean, important there's 10 people still watching um, yeah evidently it, people it, like my talk my rant half thing. of those are probably bots but it's fine i mean yeah there's nothing well, else going on it's 10 hoping those bots are learning i mean i, mean, I could boot up uh, Banner Lord, if we want to play Banner Lord or something, um, <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, we've been streaming for two hours and twenty minutes, and wow. I'm trying to meet our goals of. Uh, yeah, I'm calling you a bot. Um, I'm trying to meet our goals of. Let me find it. Let me find it. Uh, our goal of eight hours. We have to stream for eight hours, so we're up to like six now, almost. Uh, in ten minutes, we'll be at six hours, and we need to average three viewers uh on seven different days 
mm-hmm. so currently we're at 10 so i think we've beaten that um yep. we have 50 followers so uh we could play rocket league tomorrow we could play I, I'm, I'm into banner lord right now though um <laughs> i'm not recording because i forgot to hit the button because again this is I'm trying to catch back up to my brain, but uh, I'm gonna download the VOD and edit it and send it up to YouTube later. Cool. Um, yeah, and I'm glad this one uh, actually worked out. Um, last time I was on one of these was years ago, or like two years ago, and it was. Uh, were you on the first one? It wasn't the first one. No, it was um, me, you, Tyler. and uh, Tyler just talking. I don't think that was the first one. It was the first one. I feel se- special. Yeah. No, it wasn't. Uh, it was the second one, the one that I was yeah. testing stuff on, and we were just chit chatting about automate yep. and manage while I was testing things. That sounds right. Um, I think that's on YouTube. It might be because uh, the <laughs> third one was Kyle Hansloven doing his uh, tricks on how people hacked into your systems, and man, oh, that yeah. was eye opening. Yep, I remember that one. Yeah, so I'm glad this one went well, and I. I besides messing up that one where I uh, forgot to put in the uh, EDFs in the search. Look, um, if that's the only problem we have this evening. Yeah, went back. Well, that part was not scripted. The uh, the the first parts were scripted about the group. You know, the 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 not installed and the out of date. I scripted those. Yeah, you um, wrote it down. I, what you needed. To yeah, do, I wrote right? it down. And, yep. And then when we did the other one, I just riffed that off the top of my head because I've done it a million times. And obviously, I forgot steps. You're gonna do that, as we mentioned. Test it. Test. 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 I mean, um, we at, were playing uh, fast last, and loose. Yes, last night. I mean, Mindy and Darren were not at all prepared for what we were doing. It, it, we just rolled with the punches, and we had issues, and we worked those issues out. And Darren beta is beta testing his uh, script right now. So if you don't know that, go yeah. to the cash channel, beta test that monitor. Um, and it's it's done. It's He spent all night, because he's a robot, an mm-hmm. actual robot. Um, and he finished it he fixed the bugs that he found um in it and he, he, he i think he was telling mindy that uh he, he don't even ha- just replace it it'll fix all the problems that he had initially it'll update itself uh hmm. to 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 do what it needs to do and i'm just like god darren um if you're new don't look at anything darren's done it will scar you for life um yes he is uh one of the top minds on how to super abuse your system but get every drop of potential out of it um but you're not ready for yep. what he does um just run it perfect that's the yeah don't question it uh yep. run it and if you have if you have questions about how it runs like if you need to put a software package in a specific spot understandable but if you ask him how it runs as far as how it works don't you will your eyes will glaze over and he'll be like uh i mean he yesterday he scared me because he said i'm just goofing off and playing around he did that and found a major bug (laughs) inside of automate and uh which could have caused the potential collapse of millions of businesses by goofing off and he scares me every time he says it now yeah well, I mean, you know, the neural networks, you, they're just black boxes. You, yeah, input, output. You don't know how it actually works. So that's that's definitely the way Darren works. And his scripts so, and code. Yeah, yeah. His, his code is is nonsense output. That just functions. You're like, hey, wait, how, how do, that doesn't make any sense. This this is clearly just gibberish. You've clearly just gibberished onto a page, and somehow it works. <laughs> Kyle said he's given him 50-line 50 SQL, ele- uh, 50 SQL script that's just mostly replace elements. Yes. <clears throat> And it's it's stuff that it, it it's features that uh, uh, you, you don't necessarily like because it's the way his brain works. He's like, well, this will solve this problem, um, and it may not be the best method, but it will work, and you will be again like, uh, what? How does this even process? Um, and you just you don't even care how it works. You just hope it works, and you press the go button. And knowing Darren, if he's given you something to run it will work or he knows why it didn't work Mm -hmm. yeah he's he's something else yeah and uh you know if any of you watching or listening you know watching live or watching on the the video on demand or youtube um don't already know msp geek there's a forum uh where people post occasionally and there's a very active slack uh that is there's a link to it on mspgeek.com um, that most of us are hanging out in almost all day, every day. 
And we are happy to answer questions. Obviously, Google first. Um, check the, the website first before you go in and ask a really basic question. But we are happy to answer questions. Most of us enjoy solving problems. So if you bring us an interesting problem, we're going to be like, yeah, try this or try that. Um, so do if you don't already have a membership to MSPGeek.com or the um, Slack, um, jump in. I will, you know, I'll, I'll warn you. Um, it's an extremely expensive cost of free. Yes. Um, but the advice you get is also free. So remember that. Um, yes. And use your own judgment if any you take anything from the site or someone gives you something to run. Um, except it's Darren. If if Darren gives you anything, you just run it. Don't question it. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, you can. There's there's several other channels that aren't work related. There's a gaming channel. Um, there's yep. uh, there's a Stargate channel. Hashtag Stargate. Yep. That's um, that's the most important channel on the, the entire thing. The only channel that really matters. Um, there's only mm -hmm. like 15 people in it, but hey, that's that is the best 15 people of the community. Yeah. Um, we even have vendor channels, so you can have a direct connection to certain vendors. Perch, Huntress Labs, uh, Web Root. Avic, Web Root uh, Bit I think Web Root might actually be the oldest out of any of them. Um, I think Web Root was the first, mainly because mm -hmm. he was always in and hanging out in the yeah. antivirus channel, so we gave him his own Web Root channel to help with yeah. um, Web Root only questions. And, uh, yeah, and, and that's growing um, as more and more vendors realize the value of our community. Um, they're getting their own channels. They're you know they're well tamed, uh, so you know they're not going to be bothering you in the main channel. But they they're there, um, they're great, and sometimes you can get support you just can't get elsewhere. You know, I Webroot, I could go to the Webroot and create a ticket for a question I have, and it might take me hours to get to that point, or I might just jump in the chat and ask real quick. And Webroot Tech is uh, right there, happy to help. Um, not all channels are like that. Of course, not all channels are like that, and they're in no way obligated to help us. Yeah. Uh, none of that, none of this is official. Um, it's all just us, it, you know, helping each other. So don't don't demand help, but ask it and see if you get some good results. Uh, and in my experience, this has been an invaluable community. Yeah, fake Namington. Uh, welcome to level two of Automate. Um, You've turned on Ignite, didn't like it, turned off most of it. That's that's level two of Automate. Mm -hmm. uh, you've learned that Ignite has cool stuff, but most of it's useless. Welcome to level two of Automate. Now, yep. you start turning on stuff you want. You start writing your own stuff. You start making your own stuff. Stuff that you do want. And you can use what Ignite has available. You can de deconstruct what they use um, to, to see how they're doing it and, and better understand uh and target what you actually care about. Um, some of the stuff is useful, but like Kyle said, about 60% of it is garbage. Um, and has it really been um, fully vetted out? And I think it, it was pushed out as uh, like lab tech 2.0. Um, mm -hmm. And it never really lived up to that because basically it just alerted for literally everything and flooded yeah your systems with everything and people just turned it off because it's not user friendly. It's very complex and all the stuff they do is, uh, is, is okay, but it's not, it's most of it's old. Yeah. It's, it's a great way to get going to, to learn what lab tech can do at least to a basic extent, um, to see some scripts actively running and doing things. Um, there's a lot of great things about ignite, but yeah, it's old, they they really need to have someone go in there and freshen it up. Um, Just turn it off for everybody. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's mostly useless. Well, I think it's I think it's good as a starting point. I mean, there are several things that are useful, like the um, the cl computer cleanup script. You know, when the hard drives get full, that's actually pretty good. It needs some polish. It needs some. The alerting is a little aggressive. Um, there's a lot of things like that, but uh, you know. I, I am not, I guess, as, as down on it, but I do think that uh, that it, in the end, what you end up doing is turning off 90% of the notifications it creates because what you don't want to do is overload people. We have that problem of like, so we have a board dedicated to Ignite stuff, basically, and we call it the noise board and the noise channel in Teams. 
Uh, and that's where all that stuff goes. We don't actually look at that. We completely ignore that. And that's a problem because if there's something important, we miss it. So you don't want to get to the point where you're you're ignoring problems because of all of the nonsense that doesn't need to be there. So you do need to be selective on what you actually bother to alert with. Uh, and Ignite totally blows that out of the water. The second you install it, it's like, uh, this computer is down to 10% uh, on the USB drive that's plugged in right now. Like, n- I don't care. Right. I really My don't care. My philosophy is uh, attempt to remediate prior to alerting. Yes. Yeah, and remediate. Ignite doesn't always do that. Yeah. Unless yeah, you re- start a service. Or... Remediate. Uh, and that's where script states come in. Because you can run, you can have an alert run a script multiple times, and it does different things every time it runs. If you use script states, so that's there. There's a, that is an advanced feature that is totally important to learn. Uh, and, and yeah, clean it up, try to fix it, and if you fail to fix it, then make it matter. And you mentioned uh, moving a script or a, a ticket to another board. So after the ticket's created, w- using a script, it fails a few times and you move it to a board that matters. You get all that history saying, "Hey, we we you know, automate says, "Hey, we tried all these things. I don't know, I'm throwing my hands up. Here you guys deal with it." Uh, and that's what you that's the end goal. That's where you want to be. Yep. Um and uh, that's pretty much it. Um Yep. I definitely need to uh, take a break, uh, hit a restroom. So, no, yeah, the rookie move. You pee before the stream. Oh, I did, um, but I, I've got like a two-hour timer or so before uh, you know that it comes up for renewal. Oh, yeah, yeah, understandable. I, my problem is I drink a bunch of water, so I'm just constantly guzzling water. So yeah, I've, I've been just... drinking uh, over here too, but uh, you've been talking more, so I've been drinking more. Sure. Luckily, I've, it hasn't hit me yet, but I'm expecting mm. it to happen soon. Yeah, if you want me to talk, I can always talk. Anytime you need someone to just jibber jabber for hours about nothing, I am here. I mean, we could. I mean, in that instance where you're talking about ignite, my mic, uh, my headset died, so I had to plug it in. I just, I see your audio just flicking back and forth, talking. I mm-hmm. was hoping you wouldn't like stop and luckily you nope. didn't so no, I, I, uh, I i'm good to, at that i plugged it in and getting it charged back up and uh so it's 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 great it's you're a fantastic co-host yes i'm pretty good at that um well except i tend to talk over people that's fine i do the same yeah. thing normally so. i have to interject and keep people on topic hmm. i i get that too I, since i had the script i was very like hitting the script um, I don't normally have a script, so I just kind of like my mind wanders uh, and I talk about is, random things. This is a weird statement. Uh, Kyle says, yeah, it's time for bed anyway. I'm pretty sure the wife is in bed. Martin immediately says, I'll hop on soon with you. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I know you live close together, but I don't think he wants your shirt that bad. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I'm going to jump off of here. Um, yep. Uh, I know you're probably going to do some live streaming. I don't have uh, Banner Lore 2, so uh, I won't be joining you on that one. But, uh, yeah, have have fun for sure. Um, and maybe if we do some Rocket League tomorrow, I can jump in. And oh, we'll do some Rocket League tomorrow, definitely. Show my great skills at chasing the ball. Oh, we can do 4v4s against people who know what they're doing. Oh, that'll, that'll end great. Right. Uh, yeah, so... All right. Well, I'm going to jump off of here. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching uh, me jibber-jabber for a few hours. Uh, so, And you actually have to kill the stream here. I have no control over that. Well, no, you just disconnect uh, from the Skype call and done. Well, no, but uh, you're you're on my screen. Uh, I can't not. control that. It's coming now. Okay, cool. All right. Well, bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. <laughs>